hi, I'm here. Hi, sorry, I'm... <laughs> I am very... Very, um... Not ready with everything I needed to set up today, but... Uh, <laughs> Hello, everybody! Hi, welcome back! It's Twofold Tuesday! I did not change the monster cam. I'm not drinking the peach monster today. Today I have... Ultra Rosa. There we go. <laughs> But hello everybody, welcome in, welcome in. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's had a good start of the week. Thank you, thank you, let me start with that, yes. I definitely need to start with this. Thank you. <laughs> oh goodness, I... I didn't sleep much last night and I was like, well it's okay, I'm used to not having much sleep. That's not a problem. And then I accidentally fell asleep later in the morning. And then before I knew it, my alarm was telling me it was 1 p.m. and I'm streaming in an hour. And I was like, oh no, I, I, <laughs> I fell asleep, I'm not ready. <laughs> so I have been rushing slightly and maybe a tiny bit delayed, but I'm here. I'm here on time. I think I've got everything ready. <laughs> We'll soon find out if I don't. <laughs> but welcome in. Sorry, I'm I'm all over the place. It's okay. It's okay because it's Twofold Tuesday again. No problem. And it means I don't have to worry about rushing while I'm playing the game because it's one of the joys of games like this. You can take it at your own pace and my own pace is very slow. <laughs> But hello everybody, welcome, welcome. Uh, Rika, congratulations on the first. Hello, hello. Hello, Gambler, lovely to see you. Hello, Suzume, it was so nice to see you at Alfkai. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so glad you managed to like find me on my little iPad tour. <laughs> Cause there were so many people I was trying to see on my little iPad tour and then I couldn't find ev anybody because it was so busy and I, I only had half an hour, <laughs> so I was really glad I got to see you and Dima, it was so nice. And Teffy, hello! Uh, yes, exactly, Twofold Tuesday again, no problem. No problems today, no chaos. I'm, I'm just having a good time. We're all just having a good time and everything's gonna be fine. There aren't gonna be major problems there's probably going to be problems there are already problems but we can we can solve the problems i believe <laughs> thank you for throwing something at me hi zarok and who else as well boom, 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 boom. i think i got everyone oh no lumsev thank you for the work luck i hope you have a, a fruitful work day thank you for stopping in yeah, oh, the Verpro paddle was great too. I'm so glad you thought so. Yeah, the, the Elan paddle that Verpro kind of crashed towards the end. Oh, it was so much fun. I wished it could have gone on longer. And I, I wish we'd had time to answer more questions because the, the question and answer was so fun. <laughs> it was a little bit difficult with the delay. I, I feel like if that happens again and there's an audio delay, we need to have like an audio cue like, and now to the screen, people. So we know we're not going to like talk over somebody else. Because <laughs> it happened so many times. Like there'd be a, there'd be a gap in the conversation. It would be quiet. So I would start saying something, and then someone in the room would also start saying something, and I'd just be talking over the top of them. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I, I promise I'm not usually like this. <laughs> but we made it work. We made it work. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. But yes, thank you for the hydrate too. Thank you for throwing things at me, Zarok. No, the, I say no chaos. There's probably going to be. There are many like, chaotic situations happening in this in this game. Uh, <laughs> I hope I hope it will not be chaotic, but I think it's going to be. Uh, did I manage to catch the cosplay showcase stream that was on the main stage before the panel? I did. I watched it, and I was the one who let Scion know that there was an Izzy cosplay. <laughs> that was me. That was me. They wouldn't have known about the Izzy cosplay. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm Chibi. Okay, I guess this is the the chaos today. I'm small. 
<laughs> but yes, it's literally because of me that Scion managed to find the Izzy cosplayer and take a photo with them. And I was so happy. It was just me, like, I was ta I took a screenshot of the stream and I was in the Burpro server like, Izzy cosplayer, Izzy cosplayer, Izzy cosplayer. <laughs> All the replies were like, what, for real? I was like, yes, for real. Actual Izzy cosplayer. And it was so nice. I'm so glad I managed to catch that. Because if I hadn't posted about that, I don't know if anyone would have known about it. On the on the Verpro team. I, I I was really glad that I could draw attention to the Izzy cosplay, because it was so nice to see, and they seemed so lovely. And talking about whoops, yes, I think so. I think so. I know that as soon as I told Sion, he was like, I'm running. I'm running to the cosplay room. I'm running to the cosplay showcase. And I noticed they managed to get a photo together afterwards. So <laughs> so that made me so happy. It was so good. <laughs> but yes, I will. I'm, I'm going to like take credit for that just because I'm just because I got really lucky and I'm glad I caught it. Because <laughs> I, I just as soon as I saw I was like, everyone needs to know about this. I need to share this information. But oh, it was it was really nice. It was so nice seeing how much support Studio Elan had. Like there were there were so many people. It went so well. It was so nice. It was a good time. But yes, and wanna be weeb hello as well. And cabs barely awake in time. We're so back. Don't worry, me too. I'm I'm yapping at the start to try and wake up a little bit. <laughs> but it's welcome, welcome. But yeah, uh, uh, off Kai went so well though. So good. I was so glad. Yes, it was wild whoops. Yes. Yeah, I was I was so glad I caught it because as soon as I saw as soon as I saw them on stage, I was like, oh my goodness. Is he cosplayer? And then they actually name dropped uh, Summer at the Edge of the Universe, and I was like, definitely is he cosplayer. <laughs> it was really nice. It was so good. Ah, but I'm very excited for this. And yes, and Suzume was cosplaying as Miho too. <laughs> it was so great because it was like the reason I instantly knew it was you beca was because I saw that you were Miho, and I was like, oh, Mimo real? Mimo real? Ah, uh, oh, and I didn't I didn't miss the haiku. I was just uh continuing the off time. Uh, <laughs> the off-kai talk until I had finished mentioning everything so that I can give the haiku the attention it deserves. <laughs> but don't worry, I've not forgotten about the haiku. I'm, I'm also buying time for myself because I need to think of something. Also, you said a two haiku, so now I'm thinking I have to do two haikus, which is a little bit um, cheaty, and I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do two haikus. <laughs> I'm gonna do two. Hmm, <laughs> here we go, here we go. Uh, it is twofold time. We must save the writing club. And also Millie. <laughs> There's the first one. And second haiku. Uh, why can't we be friends? Why is everyone so mad? Please, what happened here? That's the second haiku. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the haiku redeem. Thank you. I, I I quite like that second one actually. That 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 is the mood between Millie and Caprice at the moment in my mind. It's just me standing here in the middle going, "Why can't we be friends?" <laughs> but I'm I'm really excited to play more of this though because the more I play of it, the more I'm just like, everyone here has so many problems. I want to help them. I want to help them. I want to give them all a big hug. I want to tell them everything's going to be all right. I, I, wa <laughs> I want to figure things out for them. Ha. Ah. But yes, I'm very excited. Oh, sadly, once you take off, you won't be able to continue watching the stream because there's no internet in the air. Oh, that is completely understandable. But I hope you have a really good flight. I hope you have a... Have a smooth flight back. I hope there's no turbulence or crying babies. <laughs> but thank you for stopping in and thank you for everyone as well, like supporting us through Ofkai, even if you weren't able to be there. 
just like the the new things that were announced with Studio Elon and all of the, like the retweets and the support in that way as well has been really really nice. And also, also I remembered to do something as well. It's I'm probably going to uh, I'm probably going to clean it up a little bit. I'm probably going to make this look nicer in the future. But I made a new command. I did it. I did it. I remembered to do this. This is actually one of the things I did this morning before I then fell asleep. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm gonna like snazz it up a little bit afterwards. I'm gonna make it look, look prettier at some point. But I actually made the command and I'm, you know what, I'm gonna stick that in the stream title as well. Stick it in the stream title. Although it's so funny, a part of me wonders, like, I know there are, like, rules, like, when you're sponsored with things, you have to say that it's a sponsor. But I'm, I'm ki I kind of did all of this stuff before I became part of the Ambassador program. And even now, it's like, oh, you'll get free games from our company, from our teams. And I'm not going to accept the free games. I'm, I'm, I'm buying them full price before I can get a free key. <laughs> Because it happened with Twofold. It happened with Twofold. Sion was like, hey, would you like a key for this to, to play it on stream? And I was like, I'm sorry, I already bought it. <laughs> it was great. But I was like, I, I've been following Twofold, like, from a distance for a little while anyway. And I was always intending to play First Snow as well. So when it came out, I just instantly bought it. Before I could be offered anything. <laughs> And it's already proving to be worth it. It's already, I'm already like, I, I need to give more money towards this, which I shall do at some point. But uh, I'm so, I'm so glad to be finally playing it though. Cause it's been out for a while. I meant to play it like when it came out, but then I was like, well, I have to play first snow first. And then life got chaotic and I didn't have time, but I do now. And it's glorious. It's so good. But yes, oh, Loki wish there was a recording of the Elan off Kai panel. It was so fun. It really was. It was so fun. I had such a good time with it. It was it was such a blast. Uh, I do have like a local recording, but that's probably not going to be shared. That's that's like a, a private thing for me. <laughs> but it was really nice. It was a it was a really fun uh, Q and A session too. Like there were some really good questions in there. Like, it, it made me think, like, the the question about, like, uh, favorite, like, childhood media cartoons and stuff. I had to actually think about that, and then I had a moment of just like, oh no, it's just probably Totally Spies. I, I was obsessed with that when I was younger. <laughs> but it was so good. It was a lot of fun. Oh, it was great to meet Sion. Never knew he was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 Sion is a cowboy. It's not just jokes. He, he, you, you fully, you see him, and you just want to go yeehaw. <laughs> but it was so nice. I, one thing that made me really glad was when I did my, when I did my iPad tour of Ofkai, I managed to go to the Elan booth, and I got to meet so many people who I've not had the chance to like meet. Like it's, it, it's still like a level of detachment. I still want to like meet, meet everybody. I just realized, saying that out loud, that kind of has, like, horrific connotations with, like, meat as well, as in not not M-E-E-T, but M-E-A-T. Like, to meet meat everyone. It kind of works in a horrific way. But no, I'd really love to meet everyone, like, in person as well. Because uh, it was also really nice as well, though, because uh, uh, the, the Elan booth was next to Studio Nekomata as well, who Verpro did a collaborative merch thing with. Elan is doing a collaborative merch thing with them. It was really nice. And then on the other side as well was one of my friends, Kals and <laughs> and Ugu Bear. And that, that was, so it was just like a really nice row of just like, oh my goodness, I know the people at these like three booths in a row. <laughs> it was so lovely. It was really nice. Yeah, to, to meet meat in meat space. 
That's exactly it. Also, I'm big. I'm big again now. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna have another sip of my monster. <laughs> but it was really nice. It also made me really happy too, because afterwards I was like, uh, did did anybody buy one of my merches, perhaps? And Josh was like, actually, we sold quite a lot of your merch, so that <laughs> that made me happy too. I was like, oh my goodness. So a little part of me was like, I feel like everyone who would buy Leary merch probably already bought it from the web store when it came out. <laughs> but now apparently people were buying it as well, and I was very happy. And it was so nice. It was it was a really lovely time. I'm. I just. A little part of me is like, I I don't know if I regret going on the iPad tour as well. I like, I obviously don't. I don't because I got to see so many people and it was amazing and incredible. But like after I'd finished the tour and I was just sat in my bedroom, I was just like, well, now I wish I was there even more. I'm <laughs> I thought this would help with the FOMO, but it kind of just added to it because now I've got a taste of what I'm missing. <laughs> But it was really, really, it was really, really good. It kind of just makes me want to, want to go even more. Like, I, I want to go even more. Oh, I don't want to talk about the, the Elan Boothville. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you were buying merch. <laughs> but yes, it, oh, you've been so nervous to ask about how Twofold merch sold. Oh, handshake, handshake. Yeah, I was really nervous too. I... I actually didn't even like actively ask. I just I was chatting to Addy afterwards, and I was like, "I'm so curious as to how my merch did, but I'm scared to ask." And I'm pretty sure she asked for me. <laughs> like I I was a baby too. I didn't even ask. <laughs> but it was really nice. It went really well. It was it, it it just made me so happy seeing how supportive everybody was. It was it was really lovely. But, oh, you picked up the magnet and got the secret print. Oh, and the standee. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear it. Thank you. And Surface Tenshi, hello as well. Welcome, welcome. Oh, you are still living in igno uh, ignorance. I approve. Ignorance is bliss. There is nothing wrong with that. That's how I was going to live as well. <laughs> But that was actually a really nice way of doing it in hindsight. Like I'd like with with Addy saying things went well, it's like if I just mentioned and things had been horrible, she wouldn't have told me. So I wouldn't have had to worry about it. So <laughs> so things worked out okay. But no, it was really nice seeing how how excited everybody was as well. Like the when the new games and stuff were being announced, there were cheers in the room and I was like, "Oh my goodness. People are excited. It's so it's so good." It was very nice. But yes, uh, I think I've woken up appropriately now. I think that's enough yapping. Also, I just realized I, I instinctively put my comfy blanket on today. I don't know if that's a sign of my subconscious being like, I'm gonna need this today. Who knows? Also, before we start, I'm gonna give myself this again. <laughs> I got a feeling we might need it. I got a feeling we might need it. So I'm having the the hot pink post-it note from Millie. Hang in there. I might just like post this afterwards. I might post the PNG I made for this little post-it if anyone if anyone else also wants to play twofold and have a, a Millie post-it as emotional support to go through it. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate as well, wannabe weeb. Too yapping. Wait, yeah, now I have to yap for another 20 minutes. No, I'm kidding. I'm actually kidding this time. Although I'm pretty sure the first twofold stream, or one of them at least, I was going for like an hour before I started playing the game. Oopsie. Oopsie doopsie. But it's not going to happen this time because I want to play. I really want to play it. I really want to continue now. All right, we're on detour. I think we're at like the, the very end of act one, going into act two today. So I'm, I'm nervous, but excited. And I'm so curious as to what's gonna happen. Cause it's like, it's clear that the stuff between Millie and Caprice is like, they're both kind of 
pretending nothing's wrong when things are very clearly extremely, extremely wrong to the point that Haley doesn't want to go home after realizing how bad it's gotten gradually over time. So we, we can't leave this like this. I don't think Olive could leave this like this. I don't think they could see this happening and just ignore it, especially after getting help with their writing so much from Millie. I feel like they would be the type to to be like, I can't believe I have to help out with this, but it would be in like a kind of grumbly, they don't actually mind kind of way. <laughs> so I'm ready. Are we ready to continue? Oh, and it's raining. What a great start. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's not foreshadowing or anything. I, my mic is... Sorry, my mic keeps slipping. I think my stand is breaking. Hold on. Testing. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> oh, that was really weird. I was just like watching in real time as my mic was slowly moving down and to the side. And I don't know why, but I've, I've managed to tighten up things. I, I think my mic stand just like has little fairies coming along in the night to untighten everything because it, it's like it's so firm and secure and and then I, I wake up the next morning and like it's completely loose and undone but I think I fixed it also Maya hello don't worry you're not late I've literally just clicked to load the game don't worry you're not late you missed me talking about uh, Ofkai and Studio Elan and how I'm part of the, the Studio Elan uh, ambassador program. It's just got a little chat command now. I'm probably going to make it cuter in the future. I'm going to add some emotes and stuff, but it'll do for now. But yes, uh, if you are a fan of Studio Elan and Yuri and all of the things they have on offer, uh, you can get a discount on the web store with my code. Which will also help me out as well, because uh, it will also give me a discount on merch in the store, which I will then buy. Because that's that's how any anything I make is going to be going straight back into the store. I, I can say it out loud right now. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, hey, incentives for joining the program. It's it's all it's all staying in the Elon web store. <laughs> But yes, I'm I'm really excited to play more of this. We're continuing with uh, Millie's route from where I left off last time. And I'm sure things are going to be okay. Every time it rains, there are, are at least a few poor souls left milling <laughs> milling about underneath one of the campus building entrances, mourning their forgotten umbrellas or raincoats. Today, Tanya and I join them. <laughs> The storm came quickly and recently. Might have missed the rain entirely if we hadn't been hanging around in the writing club. As the two of us quietly bemoan our circumstances, Millie joins us underneath the building's awning, having finished her tidying up. Ugh. Of all the times for the truck to be dead. Who's gonna drive past the burger place on the way home to? Oh. The place with the giant spinning hamburger on the roof with chipped paint all over the place that's the one i feel like you could do a lot better for yourself yeah like the diner it's cheap as dirt though nope not good enough <laughs> sorry can't forgive any competition to our diner yes also we have daily specials that run pretty cheap oh olive the the master salesperson <laughs> <laughs> they go in the rain and they're just like, yeah, you should go to our diner. It's good that you managed to find work for yourself. The job market isn't easy these days. <sighs> You're not hiring, are you? Do you actually want to work customer service? She gives a long sigh. Wonder if that's actually a burger store in real life. I, I have no doubts that there is a burger place somewhere with a giant spinning burger and peeling paint. I have 
not a single doubt in my mind <laughs> that one of those exists. <laughs> Point taken. Begrudgingly. With Tanya stewing in her misery, I look out to the mess of a walkway in front of us, coated in mud and dead leaves. Ugh. I'm gonna be stuck tracking mud into the apartment. Not to mention all the extra laundry I have to make time for now. <sighs> Rain's no big deal. It'll help the farmers out, given how dry it's been lately. Realization strikes her as Tanya's face slowly collapses. She's normally such an easygoing person that it's rather jarring. Something wrong? My laundry is outside. <laughs> In the rain. Well, guess it's gonna take longer to dry. Oh, screw this. Wait, I, I can give you a lift in. Before she can get the words out, Tanya tears off across the grounds with her backpack above her head, her rapid fire swearing, not quite drowned out by the rain's low rumble. I learn a surprising number of new curses before she's out of earshot. <laughs> Watching her disappear out the gate and over the road, I don't think that's the kind of solution I could ever commit to. My car. <laughs> Love the reading on that line. Yeah, the, 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 I left it out in the... Oh, it's, it's the painful part as well of, like, how long has it been out in the rain for? Is it still salvageable? Is it going to have to be washed again? Is it going to get, like, stale water smells? The pain of leaving laundry out. <laughs> I'm trying. Wait, how did you get to school today? Bike, as always. Ah. Fun. Oh, you know what Olive needs? They need one of those little, like, the little hats with an umbrella attached to it. Like a little umbrella hat. That's what they need. That's what they would definitely, definitely wear of their own volition. I'm sure they would. <laughs> Can I interest you in a ride? Oh, yay! Exhausted from school and the rush to her car in the rain, I ended up sunken deep into the comfortable cushion of Millie's passenger seat by the time she pulled up at my place. <laughs> Can you give Olive an umbrella hat in threefold if you put me in the credits? You don't even have to credit me. Please do. Please do. Please. I would, I would feel proud to see that. Please. <laughs> it would be incredible. Oh, like, I, I know I'm doing the Millie route at the moment, but a part of me could imagine Caprice, like, strapping an umbrella hat to Olive's head. <laughs> like, Caprice would. She would do. She'd be like, hey, I got something to help you with your bike. And Olive would just be like, great. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> She's a careful driver, especially in the rain, which suits me just fine. I do my best to pat down my wet hair with a sleeve, but all I do is rearrange the mess. Millie tries the same, to even worse results as strands stick to her face. Thanks again. I was dreading trying to get home in all this. Oh, the small smiles. Ah. Considering I saw you two moping about at the entrance, it would have been mean to just leave you there. I love Millie. She's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, Caprice would bring two and rock one herself. Yeah, she would show up already in the hat and be like, Olive, hey, Olive, look at this. Olive, Olive, I found this. Isn't this amazing? I've solved all of your troubles and then just start putting it on their head. <laughs> I don't know about moping. No, they kind of were moping. As my hand moves to the door, the shunting sound of doors locking rings out. Pulling at the handle a couple of times confirms the fact, only making me more confused. Uh, Millie? The doors are locked. 
She leans over the steering wheel with a smile on her face that's altogether too calm. Are we being kidnapped right now? Wait. <laughs> oh, did, did, you, did you post something with a URL? Don't worry. Uh, the, the chat deletes URLs if, if they're not, like, pre-approved. So... <laughs> So if, if you accidentally put like a dot something that turned into a, a website, it, it just blocked the message. All I saw was asterisk, 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 G. Oh, <laughs> kidnapping.png. <laughs> I see. Oh, she'd give one to Olive on a sunny or not rainy day and tell them it was to block out the bad vibes. Wait, no, yes. I love this. Just be like, hey, I, I, got, I got this hat for mm, blocking out the haters. <laughs> Tell me, what's on your mind? Oh. Right now? Whether my body will ever be found. <laughs> Wait, they're blushing. Ah! <laughs> they're blushing. <gasps> Plane boarded! Oh, Larry, time's running short. <gasps> I hope the flight goes well. Don't worry, the VOD will be here afterwards for you. Oh, I hope, I hope you have a good flight. I'm also glad to hear that it's... It's going as well, because I've had a few friends with cancelled flights, and I felt so bad for them. <laughs> Every time I see another person saying, oh, my flight got delayed or my flight got cancelled, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I hope you get home soon. <laughs> Wait, yeah, why is Olive blushing here? I'd be blushing if I suddenly got locked in a car with a cute girl. I mean, I don't know if that's just me, but... <laughs> She giggles, just audible over the noise outside. I close my eyes to resign to my fate. <laughs> you, you can't not trust that smile. I can just imagine her giggling too, like this. She's great, she's great. This game's great. The inside of the car rumbling from the pounding of rain on the roof. Water pours down the windshield, reducing the street lamps ahead to shimmering blotches of light in the darkness of night. The occasional car shoots by, only to disappear as soon as it arrives. One more try, Olive. Oh, now, now I'm a little worried. Is this about the club? Are we going to think of a creative writing exercise involved being locked in a car? Which directions this story could go in? I could think of a few. <laughs> <laughs> Can we trust this one? I would still trust this smile as well. I'm. One more try. Uh, I didn't mean to scroll back. Is Oopsie. this about the club? I, I would also. I would trust this smile as well. I'm too trusting. I'm a. I'm. I'm the kind of person who will believe anything. If you tell me that Gullible's written on the roof, even if I don't think it's true, I will still check, because I don't want to doubt without truth. I'm that kind of person. <laughs> Getting warmer. Better that than this being about Haley's visit the other day, at least. Disinterest in the craft aside, I feel like I've been a model student, which narrows it down to. Uh, I've been asking around, I guess, about the state of things. Ah. She stares at me, patiently waiting for me to say the words she wants to hear. After a few seconds, I gradually work out what she must be pulling me up about. And I may have been avoiding bringing it up with you. Yeah. Her satisfied smile makes it clear I've come to the right answer. She sure pulls off a convincing impersonation of a teacher sometimes. Oh, it's like, at this point, like, she, I think she is a teacher. I would consider her a teacher. Like, she may not have the formal qualifications, but Millie is, like, 100% teacher material. That wasn't so hard, was it? How did you end up hearing about this? People will tell you all sorts of things beyond what they're asked. I just struck up a conversation with them about you. You'll be pleased to know they're all quite opinionated on the subject. Also, I just realized I missed a hydrate like a million years ago, I think. I'm gonna have two hydrates now. 
I don't even know if I did miss it. I think I may have actually already had the hydrate anyway. I'm just making excuses to have monster. <laughs> no, I think I did. I think I did. I did hydrate earlier and I'm just like, I'll, I'll do it again anyway. Her smile doesn't waver as she delivers that line, which twists my stomach in a knot more than it should. Look, I'm sorry for not talking to you directly, but I only avoided you because the club... Well... Thank you. Thank you for the another hydrate. <laughs> Thank you. Sadly, because I woke up late today, I don't have my tea. I didn't have time to make a, a flask of tea, so I, I only have Monster and Sprite today. But that's okay. That's okay. I'll make sure I have tea for next week. <laughs> Is on its last legs? Yeah. That's one way of putting it, yeah. I might try to be optimistic, but that doesn't mean I'm blind. You don't need to tiptoe around me like I'm a child. One thing still escapes me, though. Why bother in the first place? It's entirely selfish, really. I was worried that if it fell apart, you wouldn't have a reason to tutor me anymore. I'm sorry. I have a lot riding on this. Well, I don't think it's it's fully selfish. It's it's like it might be. I feel like everybody in the world has selfish intentions. Like it it makes sense for you to want to look out for yourself. But it's about like not just like taking advantage, which Olive clearly is not. Also, Lost Arsonist, hello, welcome in. <laughs> Monster and Sprite is a normal VTuber diet, anyways. That's true. That's true. I'm just here like, yes, I'm eating instant noodles and dinosaur nuggets and monster energy. <laughs> I'm, I'm a healthy, well-adjusted adult. <laughs> but welcome in, welcome in. Uh, please, please do not commit arson here. There is already enough of that. I don't know how it happens, but the, it, it keeps happening and people keep blaming me for it. So, uh... <laughs> so you're welcome in, so long as you don't set things on fire, please. No, no fire. <laughs> Not the fire, oh no. Oh, not in a car at least, that would be awful. This is like the worst possible situation. <laughs> you can't promise anything. It's okay, I've got the fire extinguishers. If there are fires, I will put them out. I'll put them out. <laughs> 1984, no arson. Can't we have hobbies anymore? I mean, I can, I cannot affect what people get up to in their free time, but uh, not here, no arson here. And if there is, it's not my fault. Wait, actually, no, stick around, stick around, because if there is any arson, that you, you're clearly an arsonist. People won't blame me. <laughs> actually, this works out great. <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, yeah, Olive keeps insisting that this is the reason why they care, but don't know if you buy that. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think so either. Like, I, I think they're saying this because they do feel a little bit bad, but it's like the fact that they would feel bad in the first place means that they're not being selfish or taking advantage. Like, if they were a selfish person, they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care that they have selfish motives, and they clearly do. So it's, it's like... I, I feel bad for Olive, too. Like, they shouldn't feel so bad about all this. Well, these lies on your name, don't worry. Just don't commit arson, and there won't be any accusations. There won't be any lies. It, it works out perfectly. Like, I, I know it's Pride Month, but... Um, I know it's Pride Month, and everyone is saying, be gay, do crimes, but I'm here going, be gay, please don't do crimes. At least not here. At least don't tell me about him. <laughs> I'd feel too guilty. I, I can't commit crimes. I would feel bad. I'd be the kind of person who would like accidentally shoplift something and then I'd go back to the shop afterwards like, I'm so sorry, please arrest me. I accidentally took this. <laughs> uh, be, be gay, do crime in game. Yeah, I guess video, video game crimes are different. When I think about how my brother and I have started our run of Divinity Original Sin. Uh, that, that is the moment for the be gay do crimes. 
Oh yeah, speaking of Pride Month, uh, how do you change Eight. the pronouns here? Oh, if you do exclamation point pronouns in chat, it will send you to the website where you can put your put your pronouns in, and then it will show up in my little chat window on the screen. Uh, there's a lot of other streamers that use it as well, so it's like a, a universal thing. Anyone who has that integration will then see the pronouns. And there's also a little plugin you can get as well to see it in your chat as well, like on, on the Twitch site. It's really nice. Hold on, do I have the... I don't have a button for it, I'll just type it in. Boop, there's the website! <laughs> but it's, it's a really nice addition, it's really nice. <laughs> but Larry, loot. Yeah, exactly. Loot in video games is allowed. Oh, Sin, like the 97 game? Well, it's the uh, the enhanced edition. But uh, but yeah, my brother and I have just recently started playing Divinity Original Sin. And I've I've not played it before. We Neither of us know anything about it, so we're going in completely blind and blundering around. And our characters are kind of awful. They're kind of terrible, and they don't really like each other very much, and it's hilarious, and it's great, and I can't wait to play more. <laughs> <laughs> also, Tim, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in! Good morning! You have conflict! Oh no! Oh no, I hope you still had a good time at Ofkai, though. Even if you did get the, the dreaded conflu. <laughs> it was so nice! It was so nice getting to see everybody at Ofkai. I loved I loved seeing all of your photos, Tim. Like it, it's so nice. Like especially like the comparison between last year and this year. I don't know what it is. I, it feels like you you look happier. You you look like happier and more confident in yourself, and I loved that. <laughs> but I hope you had fun and Akira as well. Hello, welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Uh, maybe one day you can ship me to Ofkai. I, I, I am, I am kind of planning. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that next year we might be able to make it happen. I'm hoping there are plans, potentially. I'm still not entirely sure. A lot will depend on other circumstances, but the idea is to plan for it. So fingers crossed. <laughs> But yes, I, I would love to go to off guy. And oh, Lost Arsoners, thank you for following too. Glad you decided to stick around. I'm very glad. I uh, wonder how many fellow chatters you passed at off guy and never noticed. That's that's always the interesting thing about something like a VTuber convention. Like, it makes like some people are really recognizable. Some people will say like, I'm gonna be here wearing this. You will know it's me. And then other people could go the entire convention and nobody will know it's them. And it's really interesting. It'd be hard for me. If I went and wanted to be incognito, I would have to wear a wig and not say anything. Because <laughs> otherwise everyone would just be like, oh, the, the pink haired one with a British accent. Wonder who that could be. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very incognito. But no, it's kind of funny too though, because I think if, I, I say if, when? When, question mark, I go to Ofkai next year, I will be cosplaying as myself. Like, <laughs> like that will happen. I'm, I'm not going to be hiding. I'm going to be the most obviously me that I can. So that people will know it's me. <laughs> right, anyway, this is... I, I love that I ended up in this conversation while this, this whole moment is happening in here at the moment. We were just talking about how Olive's selfish motives don't mean they're selfish, which I think is a, I think it's an important thing to, to recognize. Like you can be selfish or like you can do selfish things without being a selfish person. Because everyone like, ha everyone has to look out for themselves a little bit, a little bit. Otherwise you will just be taken advantage of by everyone else. Uh, Oh, it took you a second to recognize Rat's voice when you first ran into her. Oh, yeah, I I feel like that's interesting too, because there were a couple of people too that I met and they started speaking to me and I didn't realize who they were until after they said who they were. And then I had a moment of, I recognize your voice now. That's where I knew it from. 
And it's people who have like such distinct voices. I didn't think I would struggle to recognize them. But I, I had to be told and then I then I managed to connect it in my head. <laughs> okay, back to... I don't think Millie's gonna be mad about this. It's the truth and makes perfect logical sense to me, but only seems to leave Millie more confused. Did I say something wrong? I've never seen that in a person before. So much effort put into convincing yourself you're not a good person. Yeah, this, this is what I'm saying too. Like a bad person would not be worrying so much about being a bad person. <laughs> but they are, they're so, oh yeah, it's such a powerful line. I love it. I love it. I love this line. This is, I feel like this is the same situation I had in Please Be Happy. I would spend like five minutes talking about something trying to make sense of it in my head and then a character would come out with a single line that sums up everything I'd been trying to say just just like that <laughs> oh it's such a good line I promise to help you with or without the writing club please don't call it selfish next time just ask oh the baffling sense of faith written on her face almost makes me embarrassed I don't think I'm wrong, but arguing that I'm not as good a person as she thinks feels like a strange hill to die on. The sharp shunt of the doors unlocking re reverberates through the car, breaking me from my thoughts. Sorry for putting you through this. I don't often get the chance to talk with you alone these days. Oh. <laughs> You're not mad at me. Why would she be? Why would I be mad at you? All I wanted to know was what's going on. To be honest, I was a little worried you were thinking of quitting too. Oh. I wasn't... Sorry, lesson learned. I'll keep you in the loop with this sort of thing. In future. See you tomorrow, Millie. Oh, and next time you drive me somewhere, could you keep the doors unlocked? See, this is the funniest thing to me because... I don't know if it's more of a British thing, but I'm kind of used to the, the doors being locked when driving around. Like, just as like a security safety kind of thing. Like, you know that if the doors are locked, nobody's gonna like jump at the car and open the door or anything. Like, <laughs> not that anyone has ever tried that in my life ever at all. But in my head, I, I, I like the security of having the doors locked. <laughs> But I guess for some people it would feel more like being trapped, which would make sense. Yeah, I guess it's because with the cars here as well, the way the door locks tend to work is like they're only locked from the outside. You can still get out from the inside. Like if, if you want the doors to stay locked on the inside, you have to like specifically enable a child lock, which is like intended so that children can't get out the car while you're driving. But otherwise, it's like, you can open the door from the inside and get out. It just means that if you're on the outside, you can't get in. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's... It's like a safety latch mechanism. So then you don't have to worry about being trapped in the car. Because you can get out. But you know that, uh, that it's locked from the outside, so people can't get in. I think it is more like safety so that people can't trap themselves. Which makes a lot of sense to me. There's a there's a lot of uh, door like front doors, as well over here as well. Like there are doors with safety locks where it's like you need a key to get in, but you can just get out without a key. Which is also kind of bad if you're the kind of person who's prone to uh, forgetting their keys. But uh, <laughs> but uh, our current door isn't like that. Our current one is one you've got to you've got to manually lock it on the inside and outside. But yeah, I. I, I don't know. I like the safety of the, the locked doors. Uh, looks like you're taking off. Oh, I hope the flight goes well. Thank you for stopping in. I'm glad I could be your airport company. <laughs> I hope the flight goes well. Also, please bear with me a second. My I feel like my model's drifting to the side slightly. I need to... I need to recalibrate. Hello. 
Ooh, yeah. Okay, I think that's better. <laughs> I just noticed I, I kept looking to the right, even though I'm looking to the left, and I was like, that's a, that's a bit wrong. I <laughs> got that Joy-Con energy. <laughs> I have. I'm, I've, I've got the Joy-Con drift. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to float off to this side, and then you won't be able to see me anymore. <laughs> Ah. She just smiles as I step out into the rain and shut the door behind me, the hazards flashing away in the night as I jog inside. Stepping inside, I shut the door and take a long, deep breath, leaning back against it. My shirt's wet, sticking to my arms and dripping water onto the floor. My hair's a mess from the rain and the water's reached my socks. Oh no. Despite that, I can't seem to bring myself to care about such things. I've seen the sight ahead of me countless times before. The same old apartment, just as I left it. The rain outside pattering against the window, piercing the otherwise silent air. The broken heating, the aging television, everything the same as it ever was. Something is different, though. All this time worrying about being a burden on Millie has melted away. Replaced with the feeling that we're a team. I guess I just have to live up to it then. Ah, I love that. A few days later. Oh, not gonna lie, the rain pitter patter is great. ASMR. Yeah, it's. I love the sound of rain. I think it's so relaxing. Like, so long as I don't have to go out in it, I really love when the rain is just, like, completely tipping it down. <laughs> the sound of rain outside is so nice to me. I was surprised to get a text from Tanya inviting me out for a trip to the bar with Millie this evening, especially given my status as a stick in the mud. Nevertheless, I was ready to validate that claim, initially rejecting the offer. Even if I didn't have plans on campus tonight, I had a shift for this evening. Emphasis on had, given how eager mom was to pick it up when I offhandedly mentioned the invitation. <laughs> oh, mom's excitement of just like, no, go out, go have, have a good time. Go have fun. <laughs> what a good mom. With my plans forcefully ripped from me, I find myself sitting at the same bar we visited near the beginning of the semester. Ah, same drinks as well. The regulars. The usual spot. The usual spot? The usual place? I've forgotten what it was called. It's fine. Uh, this place. We've been here for a couple hours and my two drinking companions have wound down their excited conversations and have settled into a steadier, slower discussion. No doubt partially because all of us are a few glasses deep at this point. Nice to see you guys a bit more chilled out. <laughs> Everyone around school's way too wound up about exams. Given what I've managed to pick up on lately, I don't quite think that exams are what's weighing on Millie's mind. In fact, when I look at her, it's hard to think of reasons why she wouldn't be stressed. Exams are the obvious one. Her home life is a mess given the tension with Caprice, not to mention the writing club slowly falling apart around her. I'm probably another source of worry for her too. She tries to drag me over the finishing line of exams. She sure doesn't seem to have much sense of self-preservation. Hold on. Hold on, I think it's time for this again. <laughs> Hang in there, Millie. You got this. You got this. I believe in her. <laughs> I love this post-it. I'm so glad I made this. Of all the things to stress about, exams seem perfectly acceptable. In fact, I think you should be worrying about them a little more. Ah, Tanya doesn't seem like the type to be worried about exams. Come on, you know I'll be fine. There's still a month left anyway. A month if you round up, maybe. She might do fine with her more hands-on stuff, but her gen ed courses are another matter from what I've heard. Hey, what's with that face? You too, Olive. 
I love that expression. So I love all their expressions. The sheepish looks all around. Millie lets her friends simmer a little. Tanya gives up and orders another drink for the two of them to distract from the uncomfortable truth. What is that, four tonight? Five? Please have water. Please also have water. I expect it from Tanya, but I'm surprised to see how mellow you're being about them too, Olive. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Once you make yourself busy enough, you don't have any time left to panic. That's my coping method anyway. That's mine too. It's, it's the distraction approach. If you're so distracted by other things, then you can't worry about worrying things. <laughs> A lie, but worrying about it out loud would just stress Millie out more, I'm sure. You sure you're okay balancing work, chores, and exams? Do I have a choice? Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. <sighs> anyway, you should be focusing on your own well-being instead of taking on their stress as well. Yeah, exactly. Unless... You're trying to distract yourself from your worries by worrying about someone else? I also do this a lot. <laughs> I also do this a lot. Oh, I'm I'm feeling really called out right now. I am I'm very much the kind of person where when I'm struggling, I don't I don't like to talk about it or focus on it. I like to focus on other things. And if there are other people having problems, especially if it's something I can help out with in any way, I fully use that as like a distraction, as a coping mechanism. Like that I I genuinely enjoy helping out other people, especially when I'm not doing so great. <laughs> I feel really, I feel really cold out here. Also, Mari, hello! Welcome, welcome! Tanya's built different with the call-outs, honestly. Really! She just says it as she sees it. She, she knows. She knows. But welcome, welcome! It's nothing like that. What are you even talking about? Haha, <laughs> the lady doth protest. Tanya gives a knowing smirk, while all I can manage is a weak blush. <laughs> Even though I've said this a few times now, I do appreciate the effort you're putting in for me. Oh. <laughs> You'd better pass your exams, you know. I'd look really silly if I did all this, only to have you flunk out on me. Yeah, no pressure. Oh, well, I was considering failing, but since you're so insistent... Ugh, <sighs> come on! Do we really need to talk about school while we're out drinking? There's not much else for me to talk about right now. I sigh into my mug, still half full. I should get a hobby after all this is over. <laughs> I'd say cooking counts. <laughs> Barely. I wish I could be as passionate about that as you are with your writing. I'm with you on that. You've stuck with it for a while, haven't you? Oh. Oh, the music changed. Oh. <laughs> Millie looks wistfully at her glass, holding it tight in both hands. Oh. I think everyone needs something to cherish. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't need to be another person. A hobby, a cause, a life's work. It doesn't need to be grand, just oh. something to give yourself over to. Writing, reading, the club ended up being that for me. <laughs> oh, no, wait. This makes it even more devastating that the club is in the state it's in. Like she's got her thing to cherish and it's at risk of falling apart. No, I can't let that happen. I can't let that happen. I need to I need to protect it. I need to protect. Ooh. Without that oh. I think someone is like an empty glass. While it could be filled by others, it's nothing when by itself. Oh. She delicately rubs the condensation on the outside of the glass with her thumbs. I can't help but go silent at her words. It's up to Tanya to break the overly serious atmosphere. Millie's glass filling with beer from Tanya's bottle. <laughs> Please give a head pat to Millie. Okay, hold on, hold on. 
yeah, she needs this one. She needs that one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the head pat. <laughs> Ooh. I love that there's just silence and then Tanya's like, you need a drink. <laughs> then you better keep your own glass full, eh? Oh, never mind. That's that's actually quite a sweet line, considering. <laughs> oh. Millie gives a weak smile and slightly awkward sigh, coming back to her senses. I think I'm finally getting a feel for how these two ended up as friends, despite their differences. No! <laughs> Wait, this is so cute. Oh, I love this art. Oh. The night air sure has a chill to it these days. The air in front of our mouths forming small clouds as we slowly walk up the dark street. The sleeping girl on my back at least provides some warmth. Millie's arms loosely slung over my shoulders as I carry her. Lushi <laughs> Ipi. Or at least I try to. My steps are a little uneven and I'm definitely swaying side to side, but luckily Tanya leans against me as a counterbalance. It's a small wonder this area is totally empty this time of night, giving the, walking, uh, giving the walk an almost surreal quality, like we're the only people left in the world. I can't believe she managed to get herself that drunk. I can. <laughs> You're not exactly sober yourself. Millie's weight shifts as she starts sliding downwards, my heart jumping as I quickly pull her up again with a bit of effort. Could you please at least try to hang on? She snuggles into my back, poss uh, possibly half asleep or maybe just out of reflex. I never thought I'd be thankful for years of building up my strength by lugging around sacks of ingredients at work. <sighs> Thanks for carrying her. She doesn't usually get this wasted. Sure you're good to get back home afterwards? It's not that far. I'm over the worst of it anyway. Uh-huh. Millie lightweight or did she pound that many drinks? I I get the horrible impression that Millie is used to drinking and she can hold her drinks. I think she did just have that many drinks this time. I <sighs> Thanks for giving her a place to crash. It's nothing new. My place is close enough to the bar that she stayed the night more than once. She gets the couch, though. <laughs> I'm not that nice of a host. Besides, we hang out at my place all the time. She's all right company. Yay! I mean, the couch is better than the floor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Olive said, it's hard to imagine a reason she shouldn't be stressed. She has so many stresses in her life at the moment. And I am, I'm still very firmly on the camp of uh, drinking is not a good coping mechanism. It doesn't work. You may think it does, but it really does not. But at, at least she's with friends. At least she's with good company. Ah, I'm worried. I'm worried about her. I'm... It's, it really is bringing out all of like my my maternal instincts. I'm just here like I must I want to protect. <laughs> I must protect these people. Uh, oh, I just I just want to tell her things will be okay even though I don't know if they will be. I think they will be. I think they can be, but I Oh, worry. As a lone car passes us in the night's darkness, I continue to plod along with the weight on my back. Millie stopped rustling about, so she's probably gone to sleep completely. The fact she trusts me that much is a nice feeling. Ooh. Everyone needs something to cherish. Even as the evening's gone on and my mind's started to haze, those words have danced around in my thoughts since she said them. Mine too. Mine too, honestly. I know what's important to me and how important it is. For so long, looking out for mom and doing my best to not disappoint her has been enough to keep me moving forward. Why do I keep coming back to these words then? There's no tug at my heart, no butterflies in my stomach, 
merely an itch, just below the skin, impossible to scratch. Millie slumps forward across my shoulder again, making herself just visible in the corner of my eye. I wish I could see in myself what you see in me. I've been honest about my motivations, as selfish as they may be. Yet you push on anyway. You're always there to offer up help whenever I need it, always with a smile on your face. The way you confidently assure me that there's more to it, that you're so sure I'm worth the effort despite all that. It's... More than I deserve. It's not... No! It's not... It's not, Olive! I'm sorry, I need to sit up straight. I'm... I'm like leaning forwards furiously. <laughs> Olive, it is not. It is exactly what you deserve. People deserve to be helped. People deserve happiness. Like, it, it's not selfish to want happiness for yourself. It's not selfish to want the best for yourself. They, they really are. Millie was so right. They, they really are so determined to make themselves out to be a bad person when they're really not. They're so clearly not. Oh, thank you for the posture check. <laughs> yeah, hold on, I need I need a big stretch. Ugh. Have a big stretch, sit up straight. Uh, I, I need to, I need to like oil the joints on my chair. My chair is such a mess. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna recalibrate too. This is the gaming position. Now I am ready. <laughs> Lan, hello! Nice to see you! Welcome, welcome! Emotional piano's got you in shambles. Oh, right! Right, the music is so spot on. It is... Oh, it is so perfect. I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm getting really emotional. <laughs> For everyone, I, everyone deserves, they, they deserve so much. And none of them seem to realize that. None of them seem to recognize that they are worth it. Millie readjusts herself, burying her face in my neck as I realize I left the tail end at, of that out into the air. I can only take solace in the fact that it barely registered to her, if at all. The same can't be said of the woman walking beside me, wearing an indulgent grin as I continue to redden. What? <laughs> That's the first time I've seen someone fall in love. <laughs> oh, Tanya. Oh, Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. She's so, she's so perceptive. I love that Tanya is so perceptive and also will just say it. If I haven't heard that sentiment enough before, this is definitely the tipping point. I let out a sigh, deciding a proper response not worth the hassle as I reinforce my hold on Millie's arm. Our discussion comes to a halt as the both of us stop walking, both our attention taken by the sight from above. It's snowing! <gasps> Standing in the middle of downtown as cars drive to and fro, Tanya and I quietly gaze up at the falling snow. That's so pretty. Oh! Ah! Oh. And Brisket, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome! My heart is so full. Day. Any hangovers? Oh. Oh, too many emotions this morning. Uh, I would say too too many. More more just very emotions. 
it's not too much, but there there are there are emotions, and I'm feeling them. I'm I'm feeling them. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Hey, this looks familiar, doesn't it? Doesn't it? One of the worst things about living here is how quickly the weather turns. One day it's a little chilly outside, the next there are two, uh, the next, why did I say two here? The next there are snow clouds clearing the roads. I, in my brain, I just imagine there are two snow clouds, apparently. <laughs> Even though it's not freezing just yet, it's cold enough to bundle up a bit more than usual. There's plenty of time until school starts, at least. With downtown's traffic at its worst when snow's just fallen, I need to take it slow and stay vigilant. I'd rather not break something so close to exams. Or worse. Then there's the hangover I'm still nursing. Oh, Olive. Gotta drink more water. With puffs of condensation filling the air in front of my face with every pedal stroke, the apartment building I've been looking for comes into view. Carefully looking around for traffic, I stop pedaling and let the bike cruise over to the roadside. Hopping off and holding my bike in hand, I press the buzzer for Tanya's apartment. I probably shouldn't be making house calls this close to exams, but I should make sure Millie's all right, given the state she drank herself into. Hey, Olive. I can see you from the window. Just leave your bike beside the stairs and head on up. Thank goodness I can get out of the cold. Wasting no time, I quickly hop inside and do as she says. Yeah, my, my brain is stuck on the twos for Twofold Tuesday. Two of everything. With the building elevator out, I finally make it up the stairs and gingerly enter Tanya's room, doing my best to hide my exhaustion at biking in then hiking up. Having handed Millie over to Tanya at the door last night, I don't know what to expect inside. Oh, it looks really nice. It's it's tidier than I expected it to be, considering what I know of Tanya so far. Like, there's, there's the odd, like, clothes strewn about and things on the floor, but it's mostly pretty clear. Yeah, as Tanya turns from the window to see me enter, I'm pleasantly surprised. At the very least, it's clean. A faded video game poster is all the decor to speak of. And it's it's falling off. I wonder what game that is. Uh, with the reused boxes and cheap furniture giving the air of a place she sleeps in but little more. Didn't expect to see you here. Thought you'd be off to school like a good little student. <laughs> Figured I'd check in and see how things were after leaving Millie with you yesterday. See for yourself. Hey, Millie! You've got a visitor! Millie! Also, Dr. Anime, hello! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. Oh, I, I, I think she is hungover. Possibly. <laughs> Just possibly. What looks like a ghost slowly emerges from the bedroom to see their visitor, dressed only in her shirt and skirt. I think this is the first time I've seen her braids undone, too. Half-dressed, disheveled, and in the throes of quite a hangover, it's a bit of a contrast to the fashionable and composed woman I'm used to. Oh, it's Olive. <clears throat> hello, hello there. Hi. I like how she, you can tell she's trying to compose herself now. Like with the, her, her, hello there. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. As, um, as you can see, I'm, I'm not in the throes of a killer hangover. <laughs> Even her voice sounds pathetically weak. All I can do is grimace as I try to work out how to deal with her. Tanya and I waiting for the harsh noise of the snowplow to pass before speaking. Yeah, even with a hangover and disheveled, she's still looking more fancy than me 90% of the time. <laughs> Honestly, me too. I'm... Like, even, even when it's like, oh, she's looking rough. I'm like, I feel like that's how I generally look. 
<laughs> also, thank you for the hydrate as well. Let me have a sip of my drink. Whew, fueled up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm, I feel like me putting in an effort would look like disheveled Millie. <laughs> That's quite the hangover. Millie just groans as her friend rubs the back of her head at the sight. Are you gonna be okay? Yeah, don't worry, I've, I've dealt with worse. That's not as reassuring as she thinks it is. I'm gonna head to school for some studying. I can pick you up some food or something on the way back if you want to stay here. No. <laughs> I'll come along. Um, just, just let me get my shoes on. Yeah, uh, don't tell me you're going to school like that. Tanya's concern goes unanswered as Millie shuffles back to the bedroom. Thanks again for the invite yesterday. It was nice to forget about everything for a night. Ah, the power of good distractions. And good friends. She gives me a flat look in response. You do know who suggested that you hang at the bar with us, right? <laughs> oh, Millie really drinks. Oh, yeah, she she was really drinking. Earlier on in the game, she just, um, she was having a tough time. She had a, a stressful group chat conversation, and her response was to pull out a bottle of wine. So, uh, I feel like that says a lot about Millie's mental state. <laughs> oh, I want to protect her. I want to bundle her up in a blanket and make her warm noodles. <laughs> You I let my shoulders slump and sigh. I guess it was optimistic of me to hope she'd let last night slide. Before I have to dig up a response to Tanya's irritating grin, the woman in question emerges, looking somewhat smarter this time around. At least she looks sharp while feeling half dead. Good to head out? Oh, she still sounds rough too. Ah. Yeah, Olive is only wearing their first layer of winter clothing in the scene because you thought they'd look like a jerk by not offering Millie their heavier coat and couldn't justify making the sprite just for this scene. Oh, <laughs> that's so understandable. That is... That is... That is extremely understandable. <laughs> I love getting the behind-the-scenes knowledge for stuff like this. But yeah, if Olive had been wearing their coat, they 100% would have immediately offered it. So <laughs> it makes so much sense. Sure, let's go. You okay walking? Yeah, a walk in the cold sounds good right now, actually. Yeah, a brisk walk to wake you up. A cold slap to the face. <laughs> oh, now I really want to see Millie wearing Olive's coat and Olive just being freezing. <laughs> Take care, you two. Don't say it like that, you... You, you sneaky little... I love Tanya. I love Tanya so much. <laughs> Walking the bike alongside me, the two of us eventually reach the campus gate. The sudden temperature drop overnight barely even seems to register to her, despite the outfit. What's your business on campus today, anyway? Nothing major. I'm just here to return some books to the library. Tanya offered to come, but I told her I was fine. Yeah, it's fine. We're here. <laughs> Millie quietly opens her bag and slips the book in, still looking a little dazed. I think I'll stick with her just to make sure she's all right. She must have sounded convincing for Tanya to let her go without escorting her, given how she... I groan and cover my face with a free hand as I realize what's going on. Still playing the matchmaker. Oh, I love that they only just realized. They only just realized. Bless. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, everything's fine. Completely fine. Let me lock up my bike and we can head over to the library. Ah... <sighs> With Millie's books dropped into the return chute, she pulls up a seat beside me at the table. 
She gives a sigh unfitting for her age as she sinks into it, dropping her bag beside her chair. It's nice and warm in here at least, the sight of snow falling outside the windows adding to the coziness. Only a couple of other students are milling about, and even they're likely just here to pass some time out of the cold. Pinching the bridge of her nose, Millie seems to look a little better for some warmth and rest. I don't usually find myself at a loss for words around her, but I can't seem to find anything to say. Even Millie is uncharacteristically quiet, yet clearly restless as she plays with her braid. Realising my leg is tapping on the floor, I reach for something, anything, to fill the air. It's good you have a friend who lives downtown to pick you up. <laughs> I had to ask my mom to pick me up the first time I went out drinking. Sort of put me off from doing it again. I'm so sorry for the squeak of my mic stand. <laughs> I keep trying to like surreptitiously move it stealthily. And then it makes the most awful noise. <sighs> ah. Not your dad? Dad wasn't really in the picture. He left when I was still pretty little. Ah. Uh, sorry, I, I really should have been more careful about that. No, no, that's fine. Hasn't been a big deal in forever, really. An awkward silence quickly develops, made all the more pointed by a student walking past us to leave. Funny how things end up, huh? The quiet is broken, and I'm just as surprised as Millie that it was me who broke it. Starting down this road because of stress and anxiety. <laughs> Only to wind up spending the night drinking with you like nothing was ever wrong to begin with. Uh, you say that like it's a bad thing. Uh, it kind of is. <laughs> nah. The club might have its problems, but this is fun. Things might actually turn out all right. Ah, the optimism. Love to see it. I wonder how long it's been since I said that. I can feel the corners of my mouth tugging upwards a little, just as hers do. Both of us being glad that things turned out like this. I guess this is a long-winded way of saying thanks. For everything you've done for me. You took an opportunity, and it worked out for you. You should be thinking better of yourself, Olive. Exactly. Exactly. Things are going well, but we we really got to work on these self-image issues. We, we've got to work on this self-confidence. We, we got we to gotta help Olive realize they are worth it. But thanks. I'm sure you'll get through the exams, even if I have to drag you over the line. <laughs> she gives a smile at my wilting. Even her optimism has its limits. I'm sure she means what she says, though. It's thanks to her that I even remotely have a shot at this. As she's about to say something more, though, the words catch in her throat. The visible pause before she continues on doesn't go missed. I'm just going to grab another couple books I wanted to borrow. It won't be a moment. Oh? She takes to her feet, and I follow her lead and do the same. For the first time, though, I feel my head swim with the sudden change in altitude. My heart leaps out of my chest and I throw my arm out to catch myself, grabbing onto the table. Oh, hey, are, are you okay? She leans down close to me as I stand, offering a hand to help to let me up. I take it, heaving a steadying sigh. Yeah, uh, sorry, I... I look up at Millie. Her caramel eyes soften a bit as we lock gaze, a warm smile on her face when she collects that I'm fine. <laughs> Olive drinks one canned beer and has a 72-hour hangover. I could, I could imagine that. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering, like, when I was younger, when I started drinking, I would have, like, I, I would drink two Bacardi Breezes and I would just be dead the next day. <laughs> Whereas, like, oh, I actually tried recently... I tried to have, like, some of the drinks I used to have when I, like, first started drinking. I tried, like, a WKD blue drink and a Bacardi Breezer. And I was drinking them, like, how did I drink so many of these? How did I do this? 
my my tastes have matured as I've grown up. <laughs> but it was so wild to me. I was just like drinking drinking the blue drink and I was like, I don't actually like the taste of this. <laughs> Oh, thank you for the hydrate posture check head pad. Let me have a sippy. I think what helped was uh, I tried so many drinks when I was younger that I, I discovered what I liked and now I just stick with what I know I like. <laughs> have a big stretch. Ugh, I gotta move my mic again. It keeps slipping. My mic stand keeps slipping and it's so infuriating. <laughs> Please, please stay there, please. Please stay. Okay, I think it's staying. <laughs> but thank you for the hydrate posture check, head pat. I'm, I'm sitting up straight. I've, I'm, I'm ready. I'm hydrated. Ha. Huh. I'm just giving Oliver a, a moment to get that balance back. <laughs> we stay like that. I'm acutely aware of her hand on mine, of how close we are to each other. Hello? 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 Before I can even fully process what's happening, I instinctively shut my eyes and bring myself to my tiptoes as she leans down slightly to meet our height difference somewhere in the middle. Uh, they are... Uh, uh -huh. We kiss, just barely reaching our lips together, too gentle to count. Oh wow! Millie's mind eventually catches up with her actions as she's the first to pull away, looking equal parts confused and embarrassed. I'm not doing much better. I step back and take a gulp to steady myself. My heart's beating audibly and my brain feels too fuzzy to form a coherent thought. I... what was... I, I don't even know what I was... Uh, I mean... <sighs> Still trying to piece things together, her confused stammering eventually turns to a small laugh which she does her best to stifle. What a morning, huh? I'm sorry, I guess I'm just not all there yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I, I get you. I'm sorry, too. I wasn't thinking. Oh, these two. The <laughs> They're just like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know why I... I, 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 I it's okay. I, I, don't, I don't know why I have... I have uh, 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 Oh. I can see this being a situation where they're, they're still just like, um, uh, sorry about that. And they try and go around as normal, even though they, they clearly like each other. Even though they very clearly like each other. With a final sigh to exhale the last of her nervous energy, Millie's finally able to compose herself again with an apologetic smile. Wanna just agree that this never happened? No! No. It's only brief, but I find myself pausing before I answer. Sounds good to me. <laughs> the relatable sapphic mood of um I I realize that we live together and have kissed multiple times, but uh are we dating? <laughs> Uh, professional bag fumblers. Uh, don't, don't. Uh, 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 finished Millie Act One. Oh, I, I hate how realistic it is. I hate how realistic it is. I despise how realistic it is. It's happened to me before. It's happened to me when I was younger. 
when I was younger, I um had many moments where well it, it was more like I don't know it's it's interesting to think back on but I I've had so many times uh when I, when I was when I was younger when I was I guess like a little less sure of myself uh mostly after a few drinks at anime conventions I would I would kiss girls and then I'd be like Haha, oh I'm sorry about that don't worry uh don't worry about it uh we can pretend it never happened and the girl would also be like, okay, that's fine, yeah. Or it'd be like, a girl would be going around like, a, I've been dared to kiss a girl, and who wants to kiss me? And I'd just be like, sure, just for a laugh, though, just for a laugh. <laughs> but oh, that's so frustrating. It's like they, they were both, they were both like leaning in there. And they were both so unsure with like, let's pretend it never happened. I'm... <laughs> I'm so glad Tanya exists because Tanya's not going to let it stay like this Tanya is going to be the the supportive uh, supportive wing woman that everyone needs <laughs> oh their closets were showing they both leaned out of their closets, did a little kiss, and was like, "Okay, back in here I go. See ya." <laughs> oh, I'm. Huh. Uh... Huh. <sighs> Tanya, please save us. Good morning, everyone. Today's the big day. The writing club room is open bright and early today. Please feel free to come on by. Olive's bringing coffee from their diner. What is the big day? Shut up, Heather. <laughs> Had me at free. Be there in a bit. Just woke up. Lol, lol, lol. <laughs> Can I just, like, block her? <laughs> Can I just mute Heather's messages? <laughs> See you soon. I love that everyone just does not acknowledge it. They just pretend it's not there. Okay, thanks. Oh. I think Darren's probably nervous. Yeah, today's the day. For better or worse, in a few hours I'll be done with my finals. Whether that signals the end of the semester or my college career entirely is still up in the air. Given the drastic change in weather, Millie started offering to ferry me to and from campus. The car's heater usually does a lot to brighten my mood in the mornings, but it didn't do much today. I set up the carton of coffee somewhere on a nearby table and help myself to the caffeine, while Millie continues her text conversation with Tanya directly. She must have sensed my anxiety this morning, honestly I'd be surprised if she hadn't, and has spent the very few moments we've shared together so far reassuring me of how much progress I've made. Oh, is it exam time? Oh, is it time for exams? Oh. I'd find it demeaning if it were coming from anyone else, but after seeing firsthand how much writing means to her, I don't think she'd be able to contain herself from giving honest feedback first and foremost. I'm not great, but I'm way better than I used to be at least. Sitting in this room has always brought me some level of unease due to the dire straits the club has found itself in, but today is a whole new level of stress. It's good to see all of you this morning. Let's get started. Oh, oh, I love her jumper. Oh, I love her jumper. That looks so comfy. Huh. Also, how dare... How dare Heather have a, a shoulder-exposing outfit? That's my thing. I don't want to be connected with Heather, please. Ah, oh, here we go. Millie takes her usual place at the front of the class, ready to begin the meeting. What is this meeting for? I'm sure everyone's going to do fine, but extra preparation never hurt anyone. I know Olive is looking for some general tutoring this morning. What does everyone else need help with? Okay, so I'm imagining this is going to be like the last big club meeting before the exams. <laughs> I see. Even with everyone present, the silence is as familiar as ever. 
The only sound accompanying my restless shifting in my seat is Darren shuffling some papers around behind me. Anyone? Again, she's met with an awkward quiet. Tanya looks around expectantly, but doesn't chime in. Heather sits with her eyes closed and arms crossed, physically blocking out the room as much as possible. Darren sits in the back, silently fidgeting with a pen. As Millie's expression falters, mine follows not long after. I know she set this up for my sake, and having it only serve as a reminder about the state of the club racks me with guilt. Well, I appreciate everyone checking in. Don't let me keep you if you don't need anything. I just wanted to make an open offer. Uh... Actually, I... <gasps> yes, Darren! Yes! I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Heather stands from her desk and starts her way towards the door, managing to interrupt Darren without saying a thing. I am so mad. I am so mad. Exactly! She was totally waking, waiting for someone to speak up. That... She could have just left. She could have just left. And Darren is so anxious and awkward and nervous to speak up. She did that on purpose, and I am so mad. I'm so mad. I'm, I'm turning into, like, Mama Bear Leary right now. I'm like, how dare you interrupt Darren like that? I'm like, You could have waited ten seconds until after he spoke to leave. How dare you? How dare she? <laughs> how dare she? Ooh, ooh, that... That, uh... I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, a an expression to use here, but I'm too mad. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to just say that really grinds my gears. That's like such a boring expression for it. It really rustles my jimmies. No, that's... <laughs> oh, oh, how dare she? That, that, that's pointed. That is, that is nasty and spiteful. I'm mad. <laughs> and here I thought you were going to spice things up when you suggested an off hours meeting. Fool me once, I guess. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> Tanya slams her hands on the desk and stands up, uh, successfully falling for Heather's provocation, even if it wasn't directed at her. Oh my god, I'm so sick of you! There's gotta be better entertainment out there than showing up only to make people feel like crap. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you raise your hand earlier either. Did you need some help? I'd love to be your study buddy. I'd rather choke. <laughs> I'm here because I'm supporting my friend. Where did all yours go again? Oh. Hey, you too. Even though she's trying to mediate, Millie's interjection barely even registers as audible. She's already lost control of the situation. A fact she's well aware of as she sinks into a corner of the room. Support her? By causing a scene like this, that fearless leader of yours is looking pretty distressed, don't you think? Ooh, I'm so mad. I'm really, I'm really mad about this. I feel so sorry for Darren and all this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, that is that is like the main reason why I'm upset right now. I'm getting really like protective over Darren. Because like as someone who has and still kind of does suffer with social anxiety in a myriad of ways, I recognize how difficult it is to speak up in a situation like that. And to have it interrupted like this, like it's just gonna like make him not want to do it even more. It's gonna make it even harder. And I'm I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm, I I love Darren. <laughs> I love Darren so much. He's so good. I want to protect him. I want to I want to help him. I want to be like I've been there. You can get through it. Don't you pin this on me. Get real. You must be more delusional than Millie if you really think oh. you're helping anything. Do you two mind? Thank you, Olive. My question isn't loud, but it still manages to halt the two in their tracks. 
surprising them almost as much as it does me. Stepping into something like this is something I go out of my way to never do. But the anxiety surrounding my finals and Millie's distress only compound my frustration. If you don't need the help, that's fine. But I do. We don't really have the time to get distracted by your fighting. Thank you, Olive. So, uh, cut it out. Please. I was riding high for a second there, but my bravado faded faster than I would have liked. Still, it seems to have had its intended effect as Heather rolls her eyes and makes her exit without another word. Yeah, d you you get out of here. You you leave. <laughs> oh, I'm. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm like. I'm I'm guessing Heather probably has problems of her own, but I'm I'm here like everyone has problems. It's not an excuse to treat other people like dirt. That is that is just there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Don't don't be like that. <laughs> yeah, Heather gloating about the state of the club while actively contributing to its downfall. Exactly. Like, you know as well that she's the type who's just going to be going around just like, have you heard about the writing club? It's really bad at the moment. Like, don't go near it. It's, it's, re it's really awful there. You don't, you don't want to check that out. You know she would be the type to do that. Like, it, it, it wouldn't put me... I wouldn't put it past her if she's the reason why there aren't any other members. If there are other people who are interested in joining and she goes up to them and she's like, might not want to do that, buddy. It's kind of crap in there. Like, she would. I could see her doing it. But why? What? Like, what is her deal? What is... Why is she like this? Huh. Alone with her resentment, Tanya takes a breath to assess her situation. She looks to Millie, still visibly downtrodden, then to me. After a moment, she hangs her head, sighing. <laughs> Gosh, you just joined the drama club at this point. Right. Yeah, oh, good vibes only in twofold, except for Heather, because it only makes sense that Millie's luck would draw her in. <laughs> no, wait. Oh my goodness, wait. Uh, if we go with the streamer analogy again. Uh, Millie is here streaming to zero viewers. She suddenly gets a viewer. She's so excited. She's having a great time. She's really enthusiastic that someone is in her stream finally. And Heather trolls in her chat and leaves. That's, that's Millie's stream of luck. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Olive's joining her mod team now. <laughs> She's getting dedicated viewers now. Don't worry. Heather donates five dollars and then immediately files a charge back. No, she would. She would. Ah, all oh, the pain. Huh. Huh. I'm gonna head out too. Good luck with your exams today, guys. No, Tanya. Don't don't leave. No. Oh. She grabs her bag, everything still packed inside, and follows after her nemesis. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Wait, what if she's heading out to go, go fight Heather in the parking lot? <laughs> oh my goodness. Also, Sylvie, hello! Welcome, welcome, good morning! Oh, thank you for the work, Lurk. You joined at a great time. I'm, I'm, I'm getting mad mama bear protective over the characters in this game. <laughs> But oh, thank you so much for the luck. I hope the working goes well. Thank you for stopping in. I'm so worried that Darren's also going to leave now. I don't want him to leave. I don't want him to leave. I feel like knowing Darren, he's probably already slipped out of the room, honestly, with in the midst of everything. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, the situation. Ah. Yes, I should. <laughs> I, I feel like I should in this situation. I'm I'm feeling very protective right now. But uh, I hope your work goes well. Thank you for, for lurking. Oh. Once the door has closed behind Tanya, Millie's shoulders immediately slump. They only stay that way for a moment before she pulls herself back together. Her smile returns, if noticeably weaker, as she makes her way over to my desk. 
She rests her hand on the chair in front of mine, swiveling the desk around so it faces mine, scraping unpleasantly across the ground as she does so and takes her seat. Please don't forget about Darren, please. Where's Darren, please? Where's Darren? I... Where's, where's Darren? I think Darren's about to leave. I'm... Her smile softens, looking a lot more sincere than it did moments ago. Part of me doesn't want to disturb this moment by pulling out my worksheets. Unfortunately, I'm not even given the opportunity as she breaks eye contact with me. <laughs> oh no! I follow her line of sight, turning around to spot Darren sinking awkwardly into his chair. I sort of forgot he was still here. No! No! <laughs> Sorry about all that. Really, don't let me keep you. Oh, at least he didn't leave. Oh, but Millie's just like presuming he's going to leave now, which means he probably will. Er, oh. I actually did come for the study session if the offer's still open. <laughs> oh, thank you, Darren. <laughs> thank you, Darren. Honestly, might might actually be more more comfortable for him now that Tanya and Heather aren't in the room because Tanya's lovely but loud. And Heather is Heather. So this this feels like it could be a more like comfortable study situation. So long as Millie and Olive don't end up like sapphic pining over each other and make him feel like a third wheel. I haven't fully ruled it out yet, but I, I, I think it could be good. I think this could be good. Yes. He glances over to me for a second, his head immediately snapping back to Millie afterwards. Oh, but... I understand if you just wanted to focus on Olive, especially given their situation and what just happened. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. He gets this. Darren gets a head pat. I love him. I love him so much. Oh, he's so good. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, pull up a desk. I'll do what I can for you. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Study buddies. I've never seen someone so happy to have their workload double before. I'm so happy. I'm so glad. Darren reluctantly pulls himself from his desk, grabbing his various papers he had scattered ar across its surface in the process. Yay! After finding a desk near us, he places his papers gently down on it again before repeating Millie's process of swiveling it to face us, unpleasant screeching included. Why didn't you speak up sooner? Olive, he has anxiety. <laughs> uh, well, it feels like walking through a minefield with those two in the room sometimes. Yeah. That's... yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Darren shifts his attention to his worksheets, flipping through the papers before finding the one he was looking for, sliding it over to Millie. I just wanted to brush up on my geology, if you're willing. Here's an answer sheet. Millie takes the paper from him, giving it a quick skim. Sure, I can do that. I'll be swapping between you and Olive, though. Is that okay? Yeah! Study buddies! I didn't expect anything else. I can help you with your writing class, too, if you want, Olive. Oh, uh, in history, if either of you need that. Yes, everyone can help everyone else. Oh, I... Uh, sorry, I was sitting up straight. Oh, I love this. I'll take <laughs> anything you're willing to give. Thanks. I can't really offer you much in return, though. Olive, you already offered coffee. You're set. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, friendship. The power of friendship. I also love Darren. I love him so much. He's, he's, he's like if 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 I met Darren, I would want to be his friend. I I would I would just immediately be like, you feel like my kind of person. I think I would get along well with you. Please can we be, please can we be besties? Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I'm just glad to have someone to bounce questions off. Sounds like we have a plan then. Since I already have the worksheet in front of me, let's start with you, Darren. Yeah. The 
three of us don't have much time before our final classes start, but we try to make the most of it. Millie juggling Darren and I's tutoring as best as she's able, with Darren chiming in to help with writing advice when he can. I'm still not especially confident. I doubt I ever really could be, but this is the best chance I'm going to get. The stress constantly rises up during Millie's quizzing, but it becomes easier and easier to push back down as the morning goes on. When it's over, we pack up in a tense silence, making small jokes and chatting to try and lighten the mood. Darren leaves first. Millie heaves a deep sigh, obviously worrying just as much for me as I am. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, Millie ju du she just has teacher energy. She, she is really good at getting things across in like... Like, not just like saying things, but teaching things. I think it's really easy to, like, have the knowledge and just say it out loud, but she's got that added, like, teacher quality of making sure that the other person understands it instead of just, like, memorizing it. Like, you can memorize a phrase, but if you don't know what it means, it's kind of useless. You have to, like, know the meaning behind it as well, and she's... She seems like the kind who would be very much making sure that everyone gets it. They're like, do you get this? Do you know why we got to this conclusion? And if not, I will explain it. Like, that kind of energy. I love it. Also, Zarog, thank you for the, the drive-by care package. I say drive-by, I'm guessing you've been lurking though, but uh, thank you for the hydrate and posture check. Let me have a sip of my drink. And a big stretch. Ah. Whew. Oh, your high school exams would disagree with that. Oh, but no, that's then that's a situation of um, if you just memorized things to pass the exam, you, you didn't really, like, fully learn it. Like, some stuff can just be memorized. Some stuff is pure memorization, but other stuff is, like, you need to... Like, even if you know the answer, you need to understand how you got to that answer. And if not, you haven't really, like, learned that. You've just kind of like mimicked it if that makes sense i say it mostly because i had terrible teachers in school and so i got really good scores in history when i was back in school but i did not learn anything i did not learn a single thing in history i i i'm really bad with history i just memorized everything i had all of the information like temporarily memorized and I then was able to parrot that down on the exam sheets and pass all the exams. But I never actually, like, took any of it in. I never really understood any of it. Wait, how do you learn at history other than memorizing? Well, it's it's like the form of memorizing. Like, I, I, I like, managed to, like, short-term memorize, like, the dates and names and stuff. But it didn't, like, sink in. It wasn't, like, long-term memory. It was short-term memory. It was, like, a temporary, I cram... I've got this information, I dump it on the page, and then it's gone from my brain. <laughs> like, I didn't actively learn it. Like, if you asked me, like, there's there's a bunch of dates I know. There's a few things that I do remember. And other than that, I don't remember any of it. Wait, that's not normal? I think the thing is, it sadly kind of is normal. It's... It is normal, but I don't think it should be. Because it's like, you're not really learning... It's like some some of the things, like all of the things I do remember about history are because at that time I had a really good history teacher. Like because of my history teacher, I remember that the Battle of Hastings is 1066. I remember that the, the Great Plague in London was, I think 1665, was it? I think it was 1665, around then. And then the year after it was the Great Fire of London. And because of the Great Fire, that was how the plague ended, because it killed all of the rats. All the rats died in the fire, and the rats were the ones carrying the plague around. So that's how the Great Plague ended, because of the Great Fire of London. And I only remember that because I had a really good teacher at the time, and she made it really interesting. So because of that, I have that knowledge in my head, and I, I, it's like a thing I have learned, as opposed to a thing I've just temporarily <laughs> memorized. <laughs> But I think uh, there there is a lot of, there are a lot of situations where a lot of teaching 
isn't fully teaching. Especially, I think it's especially in like bigger schools with bigger classes. You can't really tailor a class to everyone individually. So you have to make it a bit more general. So at that point, the easiest way to pass the exams is just memorizing to get the right answers down on the page. <laughs> but it's like, it's, you may pass the exams that way, but if you don't remember any of it afterwards, it's not like learning, learning. I think I'm mostly just passionate about this because I wish I knew more. I wish I did remember all of the things I'd learned in school, but I had terrible teachers who genuinely did not care. I, I went up after one of my classes the once saying, uh, I'm a little stuck on this thing. And the teacher went, uh, I'm busy. Uh, talk to me next time. And then I tried next time. And he was just like, look in the textbook. <laughs> the response was look in the textbook. I was not like taught taught <laughs> but uh it's it's why i'm always like really passionate when i see like people who are good at teaching and getting the information across in a way that really like sinks in and you remember it as opposed to just like i've been told this thing i can write it down okay i'm done <laughs> like to be fair in all of situation at the moment that's probably all they need they probably don't need like really intensive tutoring they need like just enough to get through the exams because that's their problem at the moment but uh i don't know i'm just i'm just very passionate i'm very passionate about knowledge because i i i i love knowing things i like knowing things and i wish i knew more <laughs> okay i i digress Let, let's continue <laughs> darren leaves first Millie heaves a deep sigh, obviously worrying just as much for me as I am. Still, there's not much else we can do now. I pack away the flashcards last and exchange a shrug with her. Ah, oh, oh, all your history knowledge comes from the show Horrible Histories. I used to have the books. I used to have a series of Horrible Histories books. I also had Horrible Science as well. Horrible Science books and... Honestly, most of my science knowledge is from those books. <laughs> I had like a whole selection. I was there as this uh, nerdy child where other children's had like storybooks on their shelves. Mine was just packed with horrible histories and horrible science. It's like the, the terrible Tudors. I genuinely learned more from those books than I did in any of my classes. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Saw them live once. That's exciting. And oh, 99% of history you know is via Oversimplified. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what that is. Is that like a... A, a specific like thing? In some way? But yeah, it's like... I, I ended up going on like quite the little school speech there. <laughs> but I just I just really like learning. I'm... I am a big nerd. I'm a huge nerd at heart. I love learning. I want to be taught things. I'm like, please teach me things. I love, I love gaining knowledge. Oh, it's a YouTube series, mostly comedic. Oh, well, that's a great way to learn as well, though. It's, if you make something entertaining, you are more likely to remember it. It's, it's why the horrible histories and horrible science stuff works too, because it's very like tongue in cheek kind of learning. And it, it's, it, it makes it more memorable in your mind. Like, you remember the silly things attached to it, and that's how you how you always, like, remember it afterwards. Knowledge is cool. Yeah, I, I really like knowledge. I, th I think it's cool learning. <laughs> I, I really am. I'm just sounding, like, more and more like a nerd as I go, but I'm happy. I'm happy to be a nerd. I like being a nerd. It's fun to know things. <laughs> Still, there's not much else we can do now. I pack away the flashcards last and ex uh, exchange a shrug with her. Even with the threat of losing my opportunity to graduate, as I leave the club room, I can't help my mind turning from literary devices and thematic elements back to Millie. Back to the thing I was supposed to forget. Yeah, the thing that never happened, right? Right? <laughs> Just gotta pretend it never happened and focus on passing. If I repeat that enough times, hopefully it'll stick. <laughs> oh, Olive. 
Oh, hello. hi. This is the, the splash card for the act one. Act one, out of character. Oh, I, th I think my blanket may have covered that up. It said out of character. <laughs> oh. What's going to be out of character here? And just like that, the semester's over. Oh yeah, act two. I I don't know numbers. I, th I think I finished act one. Yeah, I finished act one. I don't know how to count, sorry. <laughs> That's another education thing. I don't know maths. I <laughs> it may have had a big number two on the screen, but I still don't know how to count. <laughs> but oh, I love the, the splash art there. Ah, oh, so good. And just like that, the semester's over. The worst of it's behind me, and I survived to see another year. Oh my god, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. All that's left is to wrap up a few loose ends, the first of which being this club meeting, the last one of the year. To say it's been hectic is an understatement. Millie flashing me a small smile as she quickly organizes papers around at the front desk looks entirely unfazed by the ups and downs of the past few months. I wonder if the same could be said for the man sitting one desk over from me. Is Darren okay? Please let him be okay. Ah, uh, you liked school but didn't know you had ADHD unknowingly, so you didn't really learn anything. Oh, high five. High five, the biggest high five. I, I also have ADHD. I also struggled in school with focus and concentration, the saddest high five. <laughs> uh, oh, you advertised First Snow as the prequel to Twofold years before Twofold came out. Think numbers and orders. <laughs> order. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It, it still is the prequel. It's, it's fine to call it that even though it came out first because it's, it's fine. Look, if Borderlands can do a pre-sequel, then I think you can call First snow and twofold, whatever you like. That is my humble onion. <laughs> but okay, is Darren okay, please? Outside of our one chance meeting at the diner, we haven't really spoken much outside of the occasional chit chat, and he's missed as many meetings as he's attended. Still, his constant chipping away at some writing project combined with his friendly attitude argu arguably makes him the only one of us to really feel like he belongs here. Hey, Darren. Huh? Oh, what's up? Uh, it's okay, Star Wars did- No, it's Star Wars actually did the, the prequel thing how it's probably intended because it's like, do the thing, and then the thing that comes before it is the prequel, but it's released after. But it's, but I, I, time is fake. I don't think that matters. <laughs> I just, uh, wanted to say thanks. Oh. I was worried for the club at the start there, considering, well, you know. Yeah. He takes a moment to glance around the room, barren as it is. Yeah, no problem. At the end of the day, it was mostly just an empty room to sit around in and jot ideas down, so it suits me just fine. I should be thanking you for the same thing. I wouldn't have lasted a week without a familiar face around. I fully don't doubt that, but I'm so glad he did decide to stick around. I love Darren. He's so good. Also, Lyra, hello! Welcome, welcome! Uh, but they told you the order from the get-go. The order for what? For, for Star Wars? It, it still doesn't change the fact that the prequels came out after 456. Like, that. <laughs> but hi, welcome, welcome. Welcome on in, welcome to uh, everyone deserves the world except Heather, the game. I take a look behind me, already knowing what to expect. Heather never showed up, thank goodness, and Tanya left a few minutes ago. I really wish his observations weren't as painfully accurate as they are. So, are you sticking around for next semester too? Yeah. Good question. Before even trying to come up with an answer, I swivel back around to face him, trying to write my frown as I do so. Well, we know they are. 
for Millie. Not for, like, the writing. They're definitely staying in the club for Millie. Like, there's no way otherwise. Oh, do you don't know what we're talking about? <laughs> Just heard Star Wars and wanted to jump in. Oh, that that is completely fair. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we were talking about how First Snow is the prequel to Twofold. Even though First Snow was released first, it's still called the prequel because time is fake. And I agree. <laughs> time is fake. It's a prequel. It's fine. It's fine. It's not just like a, a first and second game. It's like Twofold is the game and First Snow is the prequel. I, th I think it's fine to call it that. <laughs> I'm not really sure yet. I think so. Yes! Well, assuming I don't flunk out... You won't. You won't. I believe in you. Right. Yeah. His eyes sink down. Focus turned back to his notes. I'll probably tough it out another semester too then. No harm in it, so long as things mostly stay the same. Yes! Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I want to say I'm happy to hear that, but in truth, I'd really like for the club to end on a higher note than this when it comes time for Millie and I to start transferring out. Still, Darren's resolve shouldn't go unappreciated. That's a relief to hear. Looking forward to it. He... There seems... That seems to be a mutually agreeable stopping point for the conversation, as Darren confirms it with a slight smile before returning to his work. I love when conversations just naturally end like that. I'm really bad at ending conversations, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I hope Darren knows you'd give him the world, me too. I, I would also give the world for Darren. I love him, he's great. The next few minutes are quiet, the only noises in the entire room being those of Millie's shuffling of papers and Darren's mad scribbling. I find myself checking my phone now and then to kill time, rechecking the grades report on the school site, hoping the fact that I actually got through things okay sinks in sooner rather than later. Hey you two, I'm just about finished up. Ready to go? Oh. Millie pulls me out of my own headspace as I finish checking my grades for the upteenth time. Yeah, sure. Whenever you're ready. I'll let you know then. Uh, hi? What was with that little worried look? She starts to turn back to the desk before reconsidering, then shifting back around after only a moment. Darren! Huh? What? He jumped a bit more that time. Poor guy. <laughs> I really enjoyed reading everything you ended up turning in this semester. Oh, Thanks for putting up with me. Oh, that, that's so sweet. I love that. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. The little exercises you threw at us helped push me out of my comfort zone a bit, if that means anything. It does. That's so good. Millie's practically beaming at this point. I don't think he realizes just how much she's been dying to hear something like that. I noticed. The things you sent in early on are a world apart from where you are now. With Darren left paralyzed on how to respond, Millie's eyes wander a tad, eventually landing on the paper he's been scribbling on all afternoon. What are you working on, if you don't mind me asking? I love how everyone's just like, oop, as Millie starts walking over. As if caught for a crime, Darren's back straightens up and he pulls the paper closer to his chest. Oh, he's writing Sonic the Hedgehog fanfiction. Uh, just some generic brainstorming. I was thinking I'd maybe start something larger scale over the break. Oh! Wait, that's so cool! Millie's eyes couldn't be wider. Do you mind if I give it a skim? Only if it's okay with you. He seriously thinks about the question for a moment, keeping both hands firmly on the page. After a couple seconds, he relents, pushing it forward without a word. I steal a glance before Millie retrieves it to start her review. Even at a distance, his handwriting is immaculate, with various sections highlighted in numerous colors. Interesting. That page was filled to the brim. Don't tell me you're done already. 
Not at all, but the initial outline has my attention. Ha. Huh. Yeah, I also love the happy flowers. The, the little happy flowers of... Oh. In what way? Nothing bad, I promise. I'm actually a sucker for alternative history stories. It's always fun to explore the what-ifs. Right? It's so interesting to think about how much can change if even one small detail from our past is turned on its head and how far that can ripple. I don't think I've seen... I, I don't think I've heard him speaking this passionately yet. This, this is really nice. <laughs> I'm desperately curious to hear what they're talking about, but I have a, gro a gnawing suspicion it'd fly right over my head. But what little I've picked up sounds right up Darren's alley. Millie continues her review, occasionally humming a note or two as she progresses down the page. After the initial comment, Darren seems more chipper as well. So? I really think you have something here. I was impressed by how thoroughly you outlined everything. I feel like I had a full understanding of the entire thing just from a page of loose notes. Oh, I love this. You saw my chicken scratch at the start of the semester. I could honestly do to learn a thing or two from you. Not at all. If you don't mind, I'd love to take a look at what you get done over winter break when classes resume. <gasps> yeah. I can bring something in, sure. A satisfactory answer as evidenced by Millie's smile. She must catch me in her periphery as she suddenly shifts over to my direction. Oh, sorry for keeping you waiting. I just need to lock up a few cabinets and we'll be good to go. It's not a big deal, really. Oh yeah, don't, don't worry. Don't worry about rushing. The, 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 this is worth it. If you're okay with it, I don't mind locking the rest of the room up so you two can get going. What did we do to deserve Darren? What did we do to deserve Darren? He is so good. He is so good. I love Darren. Darren's interjection shocks both of us equally, our heads turning to meet him in tandem. But it's fine if you'd rather not. I know it'd probably be hard to trust me with the keys and all. Oh. <laughs> not at all, if you really don't mind. Are you okay with dropping them off at my apartment before the end of the week? I can send you directions later. Oh, yeah, sure, no biggie. Ah! Uh, he couldn't be less convincing. Then I'll leave it to you. I owe you one. Ready, Olive? Ready as I'll ever be. Thanks, Darren. Oh, I love this. I drag myself from my seat, shoving the chair underneath the desk after a quick stretch. It's nothing. Happy holidays, you two. Ah. Oh. oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. A few days later. Is there any way... Hi, Akira! Come on in. The door is open. The door's open. Come on in. We are... Uh, where are we? Some kind of waiting room. Oh, is it like an office? It might be an office. Like a teacher's office. I'm a little worried by how this conversation's starting. I'm sure it's okay. Sorry. For the last time, no. You'll have to look online like everyone else. I can't help you here. Oh? Ugh. In every way except physically strong-arming me out the door, the school's registrar kicks me out. So much for that, I guess. I drag my feet back to the admin's area. A cozy little room for people waiting to speak to advisors or counsellors. Usually, there's at least a couple other people. What'd she say? Millie shoots up from the nearby couch as I approach. Besides her, the place is empty. To just be patient. Uh. Ugh. Shoot, I'm sorry. I thought it was worth a shot. It was. I slump on the couch. The grades were supposed to be up two days ago. 
Almost every other class has released them, but the writing professor has been silent to all my email attempts. <gasps> no, that's infuriating. No, that is the worst. That is... Oh, no. <laughs> the, the one that they really need to know the results for. Please. I close my eyes. I passed everything else. Not with flying colours or anything, mind, but I passed. It was good enough. I warily open them again, only when I hear the door opening. Ollie? <gasps> Mom? Though she speaks up first, Mom quickly joins me in silence as we stare at each other in surprise. Millie's the first to break the silence. Hi, Miss Penn. Uh, uh, hello! <laughs> Millie, right? It's good to see you! What are you doing here, Mom? Also, Vicky, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in, happy Twofold Tuesday! <laughs> what are you doing here? I don't mean for it to sound accusatory, so I try to continue, but my mom waves me down and takes a seat next to me without a worry. I was coming to speak to the registrar. Oh? What? Why? Well... <laughs> she laughs a bit like she got caught in the act. <laughs> did, did you want to find out Olive's results? <laughs> I think she wanted to find out Olive's results. You don't usually make too many mistakes oh. at work, but the last couple days you've been distracted. Oh. I thought if I was able to get them to hurry things along, I could help ease your mind a bit. Oh, bless her. Wait, best mom award. I'm... Oh. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. Also a little embarrassing, probably, but that's really sweet. She turns to Millie, who nods along. Looks like we had the same idea, though. I was too slow on the draw. <laughs> it's fine. It didn't work out for us in the end. Millie starts recounting our current trials this morning. The professor himself isn't anywhere in the building, the guidance counselor doesn't have access to the grades, and the registrar is very much unable or unwilling to help. <sighs> what a shame. My mom sighs, folding her hands together on her lap. A bit of guilt racks up in my stomach. She doesn't get a lot of days off, so coming here because I've been a mess at work. No, oh, they're blaming themselves again. Well, it doesn't have to be all bad. And sitting around moping isn't going to get us anywhere. So true. She perks up a bit, giving us both a smile practiced from years of waitressing and customer support. A look I've seen a thousand times. Like, the food is taking too long to come out, so she'll bring over some appetizers. How about we head to the park for some fresh air? It's been a long time since I've been, and it's a lovely little area. That sounds really nice. I think that's a wonderful idea. Oh, if... if I'm invited, of course. Yes. Uh, after all you've done for us? Of course. Well, we don't know if they've passed yet. Don't say that, of course they have. <laughs> they laugh together at that. I shrug. I don't know. I think I'll go home and check the site from there. That sounds so stressful and awful. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. Let's go get your mind off of things. Between Mom's earnest jostling and Millie's expectant stare, it becomes abundantly clear the only way out is through. All right. I can't promise I'll stop worrying about it, though. My unspoken disclaimer is ignored. The other two stand, talking about the logistics of driving before deciding it'd be easier if we just carpool in Mom's van. Hee <laughs> hee. I recognize this park. <laughs> I recognize this music. Ah! 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 Oh, 
put on. I need to sit up straight again. Ah. Ah. Shivering, Mom pulls her coat tighter around herself. Idly, I regret not springing for a new coat for her birthday. I put it on a mental list for Christmas gift ideas. Millie waits a bit ahead, lacing her fingers together as she looks around. I walk on over to her as Mom looks for the hand warmers she keeps stocked in her glove box. It's nice out. It is. It's so nice out. It is. <laughs> oh, to be young again. Since I hit 40, it's like the wind just goes right through me. Do you want to head back? We can hang out at the bell house or something. Oh, it's my day off. I don't even want to think about work today. Let alone spend even more time there. I'll be fine once I get the blood flowing. Yeah, just do a couple laps. You'll be fine. <laughs> She straightens her shoulders and braces, her wispy brown and grey hair flowing in the light breeze. We take off down the path around the park centre. In the distance, some kids laugh as they run around, playing some sort of obstacle race. Their parents are close by, talking over coffee and following their children, likely to race in if any of them fall. Oh, I loved this park as a kid. Oh, Ollie did too. Did you live around here? Not really. We live on the other side of the bridge. I only came here a couple of times, actually. But it's so much better than the one we had by our house. Aww. Mom and I would come here during her lunch breaks, so I got sick of it pretty quick. <laughs> oh, Ollie, don't be like that. You loved coming here. When I was like six? Yeah. Not so much at 14. <laughs> Mom laughs. It's a nice laugh, loud and earnest, the kind that she can't do while working. A smile crosses my face, but it quickly disappears when my phone buzzes. I whip it out and slide open the lock as fast as I can, trying to read the notification. Is it... Buy one drink, get one free. Uh... Great. Despite their team effort to help me relax, both Mom and Millie have a giant sigh of disappointment, too. It looks like we're all just trying to distract ourselves. <sighs> Anyhow... Tell me more about yourself, Millie. What are you studying? Ever the master of small talk, Mom starts listing off questions to Millie, listening earnestly and intently. Millie seems happy to oblige, occasionally trying to include me into the conversation. I try to keep up, but it's hard to focus. Instead, I try to log into the school webpage as we walk. Maybe they'll post it there first? Surely the email is automated after the fact, and if the servers are down, maybe... Right, Olive? Yeah? Huh? Uh, uh yeah, uh, sure. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, Olive. Yeah, it's so sweet how they're getting along so well. It's very nice. It'll make things easier when they both realize and stop being sillies. I was just telling your mom about how much you've improved as a writer. Oh, that's really sweet. And that you should publish your work sometime. Uh-huh. No, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I'm just teasing, but... Got you to look up from your phone for a minute. He... Yeah, she noticed. Of course she noticed. Mom giggles and I sigh, pocketing the phone for now. The last thing I need today is a heart attack. That can wait until after I know if I failed. As we walk, my mom starts telling Millie about her time in college. She never did finish her degree, but her love for study never quite left her. Occasionally, she'll still tell me about a random documentary she watched the other day, or a particularly interesting internet article. It makes talking easier. The three of us find little sparks of inspiration through each topic. Something to comment on, something to ask more about. Millie's usual air of rehearsed conversation is nowhere to be found. She even makes some risque jokes, much to my mom's humour. <laughs> what kind of risque jokes? 
As we near the end of the walk, the air is quiet. The families of the, uh, the families at the park have left for warmer climes, lunch probably, so it's just us now. My phone buzzes again. I pull it out of my pocket, this time confirming first that it isn't a promotional text message before unlocking it. Mom and Millie try to act casual, but they've slowed to match my pace. As I open the application, the first words that catch my eye are final assessment. Oh, I'm so, I'm so nervous. I'm, I'm really nervous on their behalf. I'm... Oh, oh, oh God, please, please. We all stop. I'm not even sure if any of us are breathing. Millie peeks over one shoulder while mom clings onto me, trying to squint to see the lettering. It's... I tap the email. This is it. Loading. Fresh already, come on. Is it up? Did you pass? Inch by inch, the horribly presented 90s style attachment loads in. So far, it only shows the deductions to the score. Missed question. Incorrect tense. Unclear sentence. No matter what it is, Ollie, we're so, so, so incredibly proud of you. <sighs> Final assessment. This weight is painful. This weight is evil. I passed. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. They yes! passed. Oh, my God. Yay! They passed. They passed. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That's so funny. I queued up the confetti and it got, uh, <laughs> it got delayed by the yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> but they passed. I'm so glad. Oh, my goodness. I was, I was so worried. I was. My, my, I was like genuinely worried for them. Like the, oh, oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. You passed? Oh. I passed. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. Oh, congratulations. I'm so happy. I'm so happy for them. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. My mom pulls me and Millie into a giant hug, jumping up and down and laughing. Millie laughs and ruffles my hair, spouting equal parts, I told you so, and you did it. Oh. I passed. I passed, so I don't mind the tears prickling at the corners of my eyes, or how stupid we must look to any passerby by jumping around an empty park and screaming. I passed! I'm so glad. I am. I yeah. I'm completely in the grips of this game. I am so. I'm so invested. It took so long to get the result. You thought it was gonna say they failed, and the day would have been ruined. Oh, that that. I I was like genuinely a little bit worried. I was like, I feel like even if they had failed, they'd figure out a way, to keep going. But, the fact that uh, the fact that they passed. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so happy they passed. I'm so happy. Also, Mama, hello, welcome, welcome. And oh, you never noticed the music during that part. It's, I, it, I, it was the first thing I noticed. <laughs> I, I heard it and I was just like, oh my goodness. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Once again, I find myself outside Millie's apartment, though this time the occasion's much different with my exams officially behind me and no plans to pursue a career as a novelist, I'm returning her notebooks finally. When I reached out about it, she invited me to go for a walk together just to keep in touch over break. Without the pretense of needing to study, we haven't been talking nearly as much as before. Please, when, when can Tanya Wingwoman come in? The, these two are useless. I say that with, like, the, the most affection in my heart. These two are useless. <laughs> useless, affectionate. <laughs> Since that day in the library, I'd been trying to forget. 
uh, since that day in the library, I'd been trying to forget. I promised to. The distance has helped in some ways, but more than anything, I do miss her. As a friend. As a friend. <laughs> so I agreed. But now, standing outside her apartment door, I almost regret it. No need to be nervous. I'm just going to see my girl space friend. You really didn't need to specify the girl there, Olive. But, uh... <laughs> I ring the doorbell, my heart doubling in pace as I do. Much as I want to tell myself I'm staying calm, maybe this should be expected? Muffled feet skipping up can be heard from the other side. The door opens just a crack as a pair of hazel eyes peeks around the edge before swinging open. Morning, Olive. Come right in. Oh, hey. Are you... I want to say awake. Her hair is undone and she looks like she just crawled out of bed. She yawns and waves her hand a bit in front of her face. <sighs> Sorry, no. I'm fine. You came a little bit earlier than I expected. Just just give me a second, I'll be right out. Sleepy. Sure, uh, I can wait here. Or you could wait in our perfectly comfortable kitchen. Which is not as cold. That sounds like a good idea. I could do that. <laughs> oh, they're so awkward. She smirks a little, suppressing a laugh, and angles her body away from the door to gesture towards the kitchen. I feel like Olive's going to end up doing the dishes. I quietly shuffle in after her and shut the door behind me. A slight scent hangs in the air. Nail polish remover, perfume, or some mix of the two? I'm not exactly sure what it is besides pleasant and sweet. The air is quiet, save for some ruffling inside the bedroom beside me. <gasps> Susan May, hello! Hello, welcome, welcome! Thank you for the hydrate, let me have a sippy. I have a sip of my drink, you made it alive, I'm glad to hear it. Touchdown, you made it! <laughs> I hope the flight was smooth. Hello, how's it going? Thank you for the hydrate, I have had a sippy. Uh, a slight scent hangs in the air. Oh, no, I read this. Good times. She's careful as she moves around, so I get the feeling the other two must still be asleep. As she turns away, I call out in a sudden whisper. Oh, wait. Before you go in, I forget. Here's your notebooks. Yay! Oh, right. Uh, thank you, Olive. I hope they came in handy. They definitely did. Thank you, Millie. Oh, I might have con flu. Oh, no. Oh, I hope you recover soon. I feel like that's the... That's always the pain of, like, conventions. It only takes, like, a couple of people to be ill and go to a convention. But because everyone is in, like, such close proximity and it's all in, like, a set area, it's very difficult to avoid. I hope you recover soon, though. Ah... <sighs> uh... More than you know. I think they might be the only reason I passed. Ah. Uh, you really have to stop downplaying your own accomplishments. Right. Don't be like that. You did this. You did this. You passed all your classes. Even if you accept help, that doesn't change to the fact that it's you who did it. You did it, Olive. Be proud. I might have work tomorrow too. Oh no. Oh no, oh. I hope it goes well if you do. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. <laughs> Millie gives a slight pout as she leans over. I sit, stunned, before she gives me a quizzical look and grabs the notebooks from my hands. I feel my face flush hot instantly. So much for not being nervous. Oh, is this going to be really awkward? Is this going to be really awkward? Oh my goodness. Uh, her door clatters behind us, followed by a sudden motion darting out behind Millie. The blur of movement turns out to be a much smaller woman sliding out of her bedroom right on cue. Gotcha!
<laughs> oh, I love this music. Oh, I love this music. Oh my goodness. Oh, this music's great. But yeah, we haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, almost as though we're on the Millie path and Millie and Caprice are avoiding each other. <laughs> oh, I love this music. With a knowing, mischie mischievous grin, Caprice walks up, donning her hat like an old-timey detective. The final puzzle piece falls into place. Think you could sneak a fast one by me, huh? <laughs> <sighs> what are you on about now? I'm solving the greatest mystery of our time. Why on earth would Olive here be in a writing class over the much cooler option? Oh, Caprice, please. They haven't even realized it themselves yet. Come on, Caprice. <laughs> oh, the music really does have such goblin energy. It's perfect for Caprice. Also, Grace, no, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome on in, welcome to Twofold Tuesday. Oh, I love this game. The way Millie is instantly guarded. I, I know, it's just, oh. oh my goodness, this. The only reason someone would choose your club over mine is because of a crush. Caprice, stop it. Caprice, Caprice. Please, they're still in their fumble, fumble era. <laughs> she points at both with... She points as a... <laughs> I can't speak anymore. I can't think straight because I'm gay. Yet again. <laughs> she points at us both with a dramatic flair. <laughs> oh, fun fact, this song's literally called Gotcha. I love that. And oh, Last Arsonist. Gotta go have editing to do. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you were able to stop by. Thank you for following. I Hopefully you're a little less not lost now. I'm glad you found your way here, but <laughs> I hope the editing goes well. You uh. two are dating. Okay, she's so close. But not quite. What? <laughs> Don't even try. I'm on to you, sneaking around, whispering to each other. It was obvious. Oh, Caprice. Oh, I love her. I love her, but I'm... <laughs> yep. You got us. What? 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 Wait, really? Like, really, really? <laughs> the way... The way all of it's instantly blushing. Even though Millie's obviously saying it in a sarcastic way to get Caprice to shut up. And she's then gonna turn and be like, I just said that to shut Caprice up because I know we're not dating, even though they both want to. I can feel it. I look towards Millie as if trying to chime in a really of my own, too. You literally just said so. What were you expecting to hear? Ah. <sighs> uh... Happy? Now can you please leave us be? We have a date. <laughs> Fine. I know when I'm not wanted. You two lovebirds have fun. But I'm telling Mike you're ditching the family brunch for your new sweet mm. Oh my god, Caprice. She... <laughs> Caprice would be the, the type like dancing around the sofa just going like, You really love them. You want to kiss them. You want to smooch them. <laughs> oh, I love her. I love her. She's she's very infuriating sometimes, but I love her. You wouldn't. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Try me. Why wouldn't I? The guilt eating you up inside? Because I haven't told him yet. The banter stops cold turkey. Caprice hesitates, her pose relaxing and a look of guilt crossing her face. Millie turns back to me, slightly avoiding my eyes. I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. 
<sighs> well, this got very awkward. <laughs> got very awkward very quickly. Oh, the read is so... I know, it's so... Oh. <sighs> she stands up and steals a glance towards Caprice, who shoves her hands in her pockets and pretends not to look. Millie disappears into her bedroom to get ready. Silence fills the room, something I would have thought to be a rarity around Caprice before. Seeing firsthand how quickly a row between them can go from angry to awkward, though, it's probably more common than I expected. I get the distinct feeling that she's staring at me. This is the first time we've really had to interact since I decided on the writing club, and the elephant in the room of Millie's declaration of our status hangs in the air. So, uh, Haley not up yet? For someone working customer service, you'd really think I'd have any idea on how to do small talk now. Still sleeping. Even through all this commotion? She's probably used to it. <laughs> Super heavy sleeper. Caprice runs a hand through her hair and inhales, like she's trying to work herself up to something. Her question comes out in the airy exhale. So when did it happen? Oh. What? Like, you know, you two? But this is awkward. Oh, uh, yesterday. <laughs> oh no. They're gonna come up with different stories now, aren't they? And Caprice is gonna get suspicious. Sure? I guess. I mean, we made the plan to go on a walk yesterday. I'd try not to let my face belay just how confused I am at this, too. Mm. What? Please don't ask questions. I don't know anything about this either. <laughs> not that I hate it. I try to keep my expression neutral. Get a grip, Olive. Caprice, apparently not noticing, pulls a chair out from across me and starts picking at a tangerine, trying to get the peel off in one big strip. Is this act two? It is. It is. It's act two. With the masters of fumbling. <laughs> it is act two, and I'm... I'm screaming on the inside. She's pouting in an exaggerated way, a smile sneaking through every couple seconds. Millie's been off for the past while is all. Guess you got her good. Oh? To be honest, I... Well, we set up this whole brunch to try and get her to cheer up a bit, oh. but maybe this is better. Oh, wait, no, that's... <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Oh. Oh, so Caprice is worried too. I I think it's Yeah, I think it's very much Millie avoiding Caprice rather than the other way around. I think Caprice is like genuinely worried about Millie, like like in her own way, clearly. But it's oh. Oh, you do that. If I seen your peel spirals, I haven't. I want to see them. Ah, oh, you peel your tangerines in a star-like shape. Uh, I, uh, stick a nail in, try and pull off a bit, and then pull off loads of random chunks. I'm no good at peeling fruit. <laughs> Mine just ends up, like, loads of little bits. I don't know how to peel fruit properly. <laughs> it's like, I'll start with the best intentions, and then it all just breaks off into little bits, and I, before I know it, I've got, like, a whole mess on my desk. I'm no good at peeling them. <laughs> Aww. I feel warmth coming to my face. Uh, I feel warmth come to my face at her sincerity. Caprice's attempt at masking her smile proves futile, as it's as wide as I've ever seen it now, as she takes pleasure in it all. Love is the worst, huh? <laughs> Seeing movement from the corner of my eye, Millie appears to have finished preparing as she arrives. Her winter clothes are appropriately classy for her, 
even if they do make me feel a little underdressed in comparison. Oh, hey, you look great. Aww. Thank you. You look pretty sharp yourself. Ah. <laughs> ah. Just get going already. <laughs> Caprice's expression has returned to a disgruntled frown. It's genuinely impressive how quickly she can put that mask back on, even if it does crack sort of easily. As she flicks her hand a couple of times to get the love birds out of her hair, the two of us do just that. <laughs> Given the circumstances, I really had no idea how today was going to go. I feel like both of us only had vague plans of what our schedule for the day was going to be like. Still, I don't think this is what either of us quite had in mind. We walk in silence all the way down the street to where her car, Junebug, is parked somewhat illegally in front of a fire hydrant. Oh, time to head home! Hopefully you can stop being sick! Oh, I hope you recover soon! I hope you feel better soon. I hope the the journey home isn't too bad. But uh, thank you for stopping in. I I hope the twofold Tuesday has helped with the the traveling. <laughs> A nice little bit of a uh, twofold fumbles to keep going. Oh, I'm still here. Oh, you're still gonna be here. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'm still wishing you luck heading home. Oh, in car. Oh, you're getting in your own June bug. It, it is. It is. It's June. It's June bug month. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's so good. It is. It's also Pride month. It is like just perfect. It's so perfect. <laughs> when I'm sure we're out of earshot from the apartment, I stop dead in my tracks. Hey. So... What was that? <laughs> Millie's cool expression lasts for a moment. She meets my gaze evenly, like nothing was amiss. Then, all at once, it crumples as she throws her hands up into her hair. <sighs> oh my god, I'm... I... <laughs> oh, Millie. After our talk last night, I told Caprice I was gonna go on a walk today instead of the brunch, but she kept insisting, and then I really didn't have a good excuse, and she said she'd bring the whole family so we can all go on a walk, and I really can't deal with more talks about how great the wedding is going to be, and how beautiful it will all be, and what a new beginning this is for everyone, and I just panicked, and I thought maybe if I said it was a date, she would give me a second to just breathe. <laughs> Yeah, I think she needs a second to breathe. I Oh Millie. Oh Millie. Millie, my favorite disaster lesbian. I love this. <laughs> she she really is such a disaster. Like in I, I say it with the, the biggest amount of love in my heart. She's such a disaster. Oh my goodness. I I wanna protect her. <laughs> Olive, I'm I'm sorry. I I shouldn't have roped you into this whole thing. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, weirdly though, you tend to see June bugs almost exclusively in May. Oh, I'm not entirely sure what June bugs are. I think it's like a a term that's not really used in the UK. I'm not sure exactly what what type of bugs they are. I do like bugs though. Some of them, when they're not scary. <laughs> also, hi, Mary. Yes, favorite disaster. I'm. Oh, I want to protect her. Ah. She loses any sense of composure and sinks, leaning against her car and hiding her face in her hands. Uh, they're just like scarab beetles. I. I don't know if we have them over here. Hold on. I'm gonna just Google it quickly because I am curious. June bug. It's giving me the 2005 American comedy drama film. That's not what I'm looking for. 
June bug, June beetle. I don't think we have these in the UK. Wait, this is so funny. I, I found an article here and it's saying, uh, May beetles or June bugs. <laughs> dune beetles i also love i just i just googled dune bug and one of the like suggested question results on google is what is a dune bug uk <laughs> i don't think we have them here i don't think we have them here i don't think i've ever seen one I'm gonna look for May Beetle as well because I, I'm not finding the information I want right now. Is there not like, oh, there is a Wikipedia page. Okay, the Wikipedia page is June Beetle. Yeah, uh, the common name for several scarab beetles that appear around June in temperate parts of North America. Yeah, it, it is an American thing. That would be why I have not seen one before. <laughs> Yeah, I, d I don't think... It's mentioning that some of them are in Europe as well. But I don't think I've seen any of these. At least not like where I live. <laughs> Honestly, insects over here are very... Very boring, mostly. Like, we have ladybirds, we have ladybugs. Uh, there's, there's plenty of little spiders around. Uh, oh, we do have a lot of daddy long legs. Like the the bugs that have got like really small bodies and really long legs, we do get a decent amount of those. And there's like bees and wasps, and I I can't think of any other insects that we mostly see here. Mosquitoes around summer when they're annoying. But honestly, with I th I think the UK is pretty lucky on the the scary bug front. Like we we don't have like. The really terrifying ones. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the haiku redeem as well. Haiku redeem for June bug. Either car or the bug or both. Let's try the car one. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a first line now. I'm, my brain is blank. I need more monster. Here we go. But yeah, I, I do not like mosquitoes. I don't like mosquitoes. Mosquitoes and wasps can get in the bin. Or, like, they could exist, just, like, not near me, please. Just, I wouldn't have a problem with them if they didn't stab me. <laughs> like, if mosquitoes just flew around and did not try to drink my blood, I'd be fine with them. But as it is, they do not. They do try to drink my blood. And that is my blood, and I don't like that. <laughs> Right. Millie's car is nice. I sure hope it won't break down. Wouldn't that be bad? <laughs> There's my haiku. Not not just because of like the the splash art I saw for the the act that showed Millie's car probably broken down. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. I'm like, I, I don't really get scared by insects so much. I do get a bit unnerved when spiders start being, like, bigger than, like, a certain amount. Like, when spiders start getting really big, that's the moment I'm like, okay, you can exist outside of my space, please. I'm a little bit unnerved. But otherwise, I'm not really, like, super fussed about bugs. Like, I, I like bugs. I think they're sweet. I just don't like the ones that hurt me. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't hurt me, we can have a great time. But if, if you're going to be a wasp and you're just going to come and sting me just because you feel like it, then no, I'm not a fan. Anyway, back to... back to disaster. <laughs> she loses any sense of composure and sinks, leaning against her car and hiding her face in her hands. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to, like digress for one more second as I said back to disaster it, it reminded me of a memory in my mind 
Uh, I was on a... I was going out with my, my nan the one time quite a while ago now. And while we were in the car, she lets me choose the music to listen to in the car. And so we were, we were listening to Sugar Cult, who are like a pop punk band. And like she, she was like, oh, I actually quite like these ones. They have a nice melody, which is like, <laughs> that is like, she never says she likes things unless she actually does. So I made my Nan a fan of Sugar Cult. But uh, either way, uh, we ended up like, the car ended up breaking down while we were in the car and she has like roadside breakdown assistance stuff but she had no idea what to do or how to do it and I ended up like taking complete control of the situation and like I, I figured out there was like an app for the, the roadside recovery and so like I got her policy details and I just used the app to get people to, to come and like help us and fix the car <laughs> But as this was happening, uh, the song Memory by Sugar Cult was playing in the car. And the lyrics in the chorus of that just go, So get back, back, back to the disaster. <laughs> and ever since then, whenever my nan's talking about that situation, she always refers to it as back to the, back to the disaster <laughs> because of the Sugar Cult song that was playing on the radio. She's just like, oh, do you remember Back to the Disaster? <laughs> when the car broke down. And I just reminded it of, <laughs> reminded myself of it just now. But it was very sweet. It was a very sweet moment. But th I'm always going to think about the car breaking down when I hear that song now. <laughs> right, anyway, back to this. Back to uh, poor Millie over here. She loses any sense of composure and sinks, leaning against her car and hiding her face in her hands. Okay. Okay. Can we back up, maybe? I'm so sorry. I'll call Caprice now. I I just didn't want to... I'm not saying that. I'm... It's, um, unexpected, sure, but I, I mean, you know, some context would really help me out here. Yeah, like... A wedding? Hi? <laughs> Millie pulls her face from her hands and looks at me. Something about this seems off, and there's a million things I want to ask. But first, small steps. Let's go on that walk. And we can talk? Yes. Millie stares at me like I just offered to give her a million dollars. Yeah, uh, okay. A uh, walk sounds great. Huh. <sighs> oh my goodness, these two. <laughs> A million dollars? <laughs> I don't even remember the drive. We were headed to a park the next town over that has beautiful scenery, according to Millie. In the back of my head, I realized the whole plan was to get as far away from her apartment as possible. I couldn't find time to worry about that, though. Instead, I was carefully entangling the web of words Millie threw out in a panic, trying to figure out where to start. I, uh, mm, mm, yeah. Maybe it's not necessary, though. We barely make it five steps when Millie begins fidgeting with her braid, starting and restarting sentences. Um, right. So, maybe we can, um, I'll, the whole dating excuse thing. That'd be a nice place to start. <sighs> I've been trying to get out of this brunch for, well, since they brought it up a few days ago. Caprice won't take no for an answer. Every time I try, she keeps pulling me back in. Oh, it's so sad knowing that it's because Caprice wants to cheer Millie up. It's like, oh. If I say I don't want to eat breakfast, she suggests lunch. If I say I have early dinner plans, she suggests brunch. Over and over. Over and over. Zarok, thank you for the posture check and hydrate. That's actually really funny because I I just took a sip of my drink while Millie was talking as well. <laughs> but I'll have another. And a big stretch. 
Ugh, there we go. Let's try and figure out what on earth Millie is talking about. <laughs> but, uh, thank you for the posture check, Hydrate. How's the game going? The game is going infuriatingly. I say, I say like as a positive thing. It's, a <laughs> it's amazing. I love this game so much. And these two have fumbled every bag so far. These two, I, I, I just want to be here. Like I'm just imagining myself. It's like the getting two dolls and just being like, just kiss already. Just, just smush their heads together. Just realize it. I think they will realize it here. Hopefully. Unless they fumble the bag again, but I uh, will see. <laughs> but I love this game. I love this game so much. Ah. Okay, so having a date. Yes? I just thought if she saw I was doing something positive, <laughs> she wouldn't mind. I mean, she was right. Uh, not often you hear infuriating as a good thing from a person who plays puzzle games. <laughs> well, I don't really get frustrated very often. I'm, I feel like it takes a lot to frustrate me. I'm a very patient person a lot of the time. But it's, it's like, it's not like an infuriating frustrated. It's more like a, oh, can you just realize already frustrated. <laughs> oh, the pronouns are showing up. Excellent. Excellent. Sometimes it does take a little while to update on the screen, but I'm, I'm glad they're showing up now. Nice. Why not just say you're going out with Tanya? Because every time Tanya and I go out, we go to a bar. That uh. only reignites her recruitment efforts. Yes, Caprice is also worried about Millie's drinking, I see. I love it. I try not to show it too much, but on that specific point, Caprice may be right. Yes, oh, thank you for doing the command for me too. Yeah, if you if you want your pronouns to show up on the screen, then uh, feel free to use that website. Uh, there's quite a few chats that do use it as well. And there's also like plugins and stuff to make it show up in your own chat as well. But yeah, I think it's like a really nice touch. I like, I like knowing everyone's pronouns so I don't accidentally use the wrong ones. <laughs> Although I was happy to join in those couple times, I don't think I could handle drinking any more often than that. Giving out pronouns for free in this economy, yeah, it's I, on my own dime. There you go. Here you go. Have a pronoun. <laughs> Maybe even two. You can have more if you want. Doesn't matter. It's yours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> free pronouns. Take as many as you can. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got some friends who are very very firmly like I really dislike if you use any pronouns other than these for me. I've got other people I know who are just like just use whatever pronouns you like it is fine I do not mind and and I just I just like knowing mostly I'm <laughs> it's nice to to not to have the knowledge ahead of time so I don't make a mistake. But uh <laughs> yeah yeah I'm sure it can't be healthy, and it didn't escape me how well the bartender seemed to recognize both Millie and Tanya whenever we went. It's exactly, it's exactly how I felt. I'm like, every time I see them drinking, I'm like, that's not a good coping mechanism, please. Look after yourself. And ah, uh, oh, Suzume, I can't wait to see all of the merch you, you bought. Please, please post pictures of everything. I want to see all of it. <laughs> I want to see all the merch. Oh, but I, I hope your journey back is easy as well. Yep, call you he, she, they, whatever. Just don't call you names, it hurts your feelings. I would never. The only person I'm calling names here is Heather. And that's only because she's being mean and nasty. And I will call her out on being mean and nasty. That's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> Selling pronouns on the seashore. 
Please, please don't scalp the pronouns. <laughs> I'll just give out more for free. Uh, currently wearing a mask at home just to be safe. Don't want to get the parents sick. Yeah, that's that's a good approach to have, I think. Like, hopefully it's not too bad and you can recover quickly. But if it does end up being like it lasts a bit longer, then it's nice to like not worry about spreading that around so much. But I really hope you do recover soon. I hope it's nothing. I hope it's just like a really short-term virus that'll just go. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Millie pauses to watch some birds peck at the ground in front of us. Fluffy and fat, I wonder how easy life must be for them. Okay. And going to this brunch is bad. You could say that, but then you'd be the only other person on Team Millie in the whole world. Well, I know, I know that's not true because Mari's here. <laughs> But oh, this feels really sad. <laughs> no, I think there's. I think there are plenty of people on Team Millie. You just. She just doesn't realize it right now. Uh. What's wrong with Caprice's family? If they're anything like her, I can imagine why a whole crowd of them might be overwhelming. Instead, Millie turns to me, a difficult expression written across her face. It's. <sighs> It's not... Is it her family? The family brunch is supposed to be me, her, and our parents. Oh. Oh. They're getting married. Oh my... What? Oh, this... Oh, this... Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. Huh. Huh. Okay. Okay. I am now understanding why the situation is so awkward. Whoa. Oh, wow. I, I, did, oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh, I didn't see that coming. I did not see that coming. Uh, oh. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that would change the dynamic a little bit, huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> In my prologue stream, I was like, Caprice and Millie should just kiss already. <laughs> I take it back. I didn't know. I didn't know. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> ah! Oh, my goodness. Oh, I did not see that coming. That would explain why things are like so different. That that would that would explain so much how differently things are going. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, thankfully I wasn't like I wasn't saying it in like a serious sense. I wasn't saying it in like an I'm invested in these two being a couple kind of sense. Otherwise I that would have been even more awkward. It was more of a jokey like, well they're they're both clearly gay. <laughs> At least a little bit. But oh my goodness, no wonder the dynamic's changing. No wonder, no wonder things are like so different from before. That is, oh. Wow. Wow, I, I didn't see that coming at all. I, did. I had no idea, I had no idea. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I know it shouldn't matter. They're adults, and they can do whatever they want. Uh -huh. I just wish they'd stop trying to drag me into it. Oh, oh goodness, this is... Wow. Yeah, I... Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Neither was I! I wasn't expecting that either! <laughs> do you not like her mom? No, it's not that at all. I adore Charlie. It's just... Millie groans, trying to explain something that she's already sure I won't understand. It's just... I... I can't get into it right now. Oh? I just really need some space. 
I feel like ever since that announcement, I haven't been able to even think without Caprice barging in, trying to fix everything with brute force and a smile. Hence why she's been avoiding Caprice so much. Hence why things have been so tense. The, but the longer she avoids it, the, the worse it's going to get. Ah, uh, ha, 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 wow. Ha. Huh. She goes quiet. I don't know what I could possibly say, or if I should even should say anything. Whatever's going on has a depth I'm not equipped for. Millie herself seems to struggle scratching the surface of it, so whatever chance I have is close to none. Watching her stare out towards the trees where the birds have flocked together and nestled on a branch, I can see her go through a million different explanations and ultimately fail to develop any single one. Between the writing club falling apart around her, being bombarded with a wedding she doesn't approve of at home, and even her friends roping me in to help in their own ways, I think I might understand a bit better now. Even if the way she went about it was pure survival instinct, I don't think I mind being a quick getaway, a, a shield to let her get away from it all. They're gonna start fake dating, aren't they? I'm... They're gonna start fake dating. I can, I can sense All it. Alright, I think I get it. Are you mad? I, I would, I would be pretty mad. Meh. <laughs> That's such an olive response. I decide to leave out the fact that a tiny bit of what Caprice had said earlier rang true. A bit of a crush never hurt anyone. Look, the fact is, without you, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. Maybe working a second job to try and pay back my mom or whatever. The least I can do is help you get some peace of mind. You of all people deserve that. Oh, that's so good. Ah. Millie blinks a few times. A broad grin grows across her face, then I lose my footing slightly as she pulls me into a hug. <sighs> Thank you so much, Olive. Ah! Don't mention it. Ah. Do you want to set some ground rules? Huh? Uh, I mean, we can just play it by ear. I did tell Caprice we just started dating yesterday. <laughs> they are, they're doing the fake dating thing. Even though they're gonna be like, real dating, because they clearly like each other, they're, they're still gonna be like, oh, but we're not really dating. Oh, these two, these two. <laughs> oh, of course they are. How long is this going to take for them to realize that they're actually dating? <laughs> we do another lap around the lake, exchanging general rules and guidelines. No kissing, as if that was an option. Yes, hand-holding, no pet names. We promise not to worry too much over it. Not to let it ruin whatever we have going for us. Halfway through, it becomes a bit of a game. We start going back and forth on fun excuses for her to use, like my apartment being flooded or how we planned a backtrack backpacking trip for the entire weekend. Some of Millie's inner author comes out as we talk over the specifics of our story. That I confessed to her, that she accepted, that I gave her some flowers. I'm struck immediately by how much of a romantic she is. We round the bend of the lake once more, smiling. That's good. Oh, and if they ask why I fell for you, it'll be because of a story you wrote in club that just captured my heart. Is that what happened? Oh, which one? My totally fictional romance from the point of view of a failing student? <laughs> she gives me a playful shove and we head over to the car. I wait on the sidewalk as she goes to retrieve it, parked so close to two cars that there'd be no possible way for me to get in without hitting the car next to it. <laughs> huh? 
haiku time. Back to Millie's car. I sure hope it won't break down. Then they would be stuck. <laughs> that that doesn't sound promising. That can't be good. I lean over to get a glimpse of Millie's expression, but instead I just see her hair as she rests her forehead against the steering wheel. She pulls out her cell phone and begins dialing. I knew it. I knew it. Back to Millie's car. I sure hope it won't Want break down. Cup of coffee? Oh, it just broke down. <laughs> Her car would not start. I could not see that coming. No idea at all. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, sure. Uh, thank you. I top her off, laying out some extra creamer on the table. After her car broke down, she called a tow truck and got it taken to her dad's repair shop. We took the bus back to town. I'm not really scheduled to work, but I figured hanging out here was probably better than my place. Understandably, after this morning, Millie was reticent to go back to her apartment so early, too. She didn't call her dad until well after three, when they'd definitely be done with their brunch. She gave a lukewarm excuse about her car breaking down and her cell not having signal. Since then, we've been hanging out here until her car's ready. Her dad promised to drop it off once he got it working again. Are you sure you don't want to take a break? Ah. Ah, Bob, hello. Thank you for the hydrate. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm having a sippy. I hope you're doing well. Happy Two Bold Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome! Um, two people who very much like each other just started fake dating. And I don't know how long it's going to take them to realize they're actually dating. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> but uh, welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Unable to just sit still for hours, I put on an apron a bit earlier and started helping out with the dinner rush. I'm fine. Can you run table three? It's in the window. Mom shakes her head in defeat and loads her arms up with plates, scurrying off back to deliver food. Ah, you're okay, just quite busy with VR chat stuff and work. Oh, I hope the busyness eases off soon. But uh, I hope you've been having fun with the VR chat stuff too. I, I love seeing the, <laughs> the, the stuff that you've been making. It's so cool. The stuff you've been rigging up. It's, it's very, very cool. Hee <laughs> hee. Millie's been sitting in the same booth for a few hours now. In the time we've been here, she's almost finished the novel she's working through. Some mystery novel? Oh? Oh. Every once in a while, she flips forward a few pages with a worried look on her face, only to exhale in relief and go back to where she was. How do you read like that, Millie? When I asked her about it... I can't stand not knowing if my favorite character is going to die or not. I have to check to prepare myself. <laughs> Millie is the exact opposite of me when it comes to spoilers. She's spoiling herself on the book, whereas I am like, I will, I will avoid every spoiler with my life. I will, I will plug my ears and go la la la, not listening, <laughs> to avoid spoilers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh. What do you do if they do? Well, I guess then she has time to prepare. Skip to the end to see if the killer gets uh. cut. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, Millie. And if it ends on a cliffhanger? Put it on the DNF shelf. Did not finish. <laughs> I return the book. I knew it. I knew it. Outside, night has fallen. 
I don't mind the days getting shorter, but it definitely screws with my overall perception of time. That's okay, time's fake. You don't need to perceive time. It's not real. I'm cleaning off an empty table when the bell chimes. Welcome to the bell house. <gasps> Is that her dad? Hey, I'm looking for... Dad, I I'm over here. Hi. We get to meet her dad. Nice. Millie springs up from her table, grabbing her book as she goes. The man, Millie's dad apparently, perks up right away, instantly looking more comfortable seeing his daughter than talking to a random stranger. Thanks for coming out here. How's Junebug? See for yourself. He gestures outside where Millie's car is idling at the parking spot closest to the door. Millie exhales loudly, pressing her hands close to her chest. Not wanting to eavesdrop, I busy myself with cleaning the booth Millie was at. Unfortunately, it's also a very small diner, so it's impossible not to overhear everything. Also, Brindley, hello! Welcome, welcome, hello, Papa. There he is. <laughs> is it bad that my first thought is I wonder how old he is? Like, genuine curiosity. <laughs> wow, thank goodness. What was wrong with her? Nothing too major. Just had a bit of buildup in the injector. I nod as though I know what that means. He puts his hands in his pockets, glancing away from Millie. You got a royal chain somewhere else, huh? Oh, yeah, I, I just didn't want to bother you. Oh. Mm. You never bother me. If you brought it to our place, would have been able to catch it. Lesson learned, I guess. Oh. 40? I, I'd guess like in his 40s. Possibly late 30s, could go up to like early 50s. I'm, I'm really bad at judging ages either way. But uh, I, I don't think he looks like super old, so I would say like... 30s, 40s. Who knows? Maybe it'll turn out he's, he's like 65 or something, and I'll be completely off. <laughs> Millie looks over to me, smiling. She waves me over to join the conversation. I shake my head no, but her dad locks eyes with me expectantly. She's already introducing me before I stand up straight. Dad, this is Olive. They're the student I was tutoring last semester. Olive, this is my dad. Hello, Millie's dad. Mike's fine. Nice to meet you, Olive. Mike! Oh! Oh, so when Caprice said I'm gonna tell Mike, that- 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 that's even- that's even, like, a- a bigger thing to threaten because Mike is her dad. I was thinking, like, a brother or something, possibly, I think. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Hey, uh, nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too, Mike. I have an uncle called Mike. <laughs> I give Millie a wary glance. For the person whose marriage is causing the entire feud between her and Caprice, I'd expected someone tougher to deal with. Instead, he extends a warm handshake. Yeah, I get the feeling that the 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 marriage thing isn't about them being hard to deal with it's more about like not not the mum and dad it's more about caprice <laughs> and how differently things would seem if suddenly they're stepsisters it's like it's it's a little it's like a weird dynamic to suddenly get used to ha huh. His hands are large and rough, and he has a slight smile like a man who's just as awkward at meeting new people as I am. Well, ready to get going, Millie? Sure. Want me to drop you off at home or the shop? Uh, actually, I... <sighs> oh... Oh, this is gonna be a bit awkward. This this is gonna be a bit awkward. This uh -huh. the bell chimes again. 
Gingerly stepping away from the two in the middle of the aisle, I go to greet the new customer, but she immediately gives me a polite nod and heads over to meet them too. Mike, I had to park around the corner. You know it says customers only, right? <laughs> Jolly, I thought we'd order some food for dinner while we're here. Oh. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna have dinner. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. I'll ask Caprice what she'd like. Is she here as well? The woman called Charlie gives Millie a warm smile while she tucks a strand of hair. Uh, I'm, 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 str I've, I've forgotten how to speak words. Uh. The woman called Charlie gives Millie a warm smile while she tucks a strand of hair behind her ear. Hey, Millie. We missed you at brunch. How are you doing? Oh. I think I understand Millie a bit more now. I think the reason why this is so hard for her is because everyone is lovely and great. And she's the only one who's, like, feeling awkward and unhappy about this. She's going to feel guilty for feeling that way when everyone is so lovely and happy and sweet, isn't she? I'm the <laughs> Oh my goodness. She seems so nice. Like, instantly just knowing she's the kind of person who will not park in a customer's only space if she's not a customer there. That says so much about her immediately. <laughs> and instantly, I'm... Oh... Uh... Yeah, despite being the exact same sprite as usual, the smile on Millie looks so forced right now. It does. It's like, this is the mask. This is the, the Millie mask. Oh, hey, Miss Shifton. Ah. So that's... Millie shrugs on her coat, ending the conversation from earlier without asking more. Charlie glances at Mike with an unspoken question. He awkwardly looks around and grabs a menu off of one of the tables. Actually, uh, Caprice is over at our place right now. We were just going over the date, and we were thinking of moving it back a weekend. Oh? I thought we could all eat dinner together. Oh. Wanna drop Junebug off at the apartment and carpool in the truck? It hurts. It hurts my heart. Millie's gonna say no, I know, but everyone is trying so hard, and it hurts my heart. No thanks. The air in the diner feels instantly colder. Even the couple customers up front have lowered their voices, trying not to bother the standoff happening in the middle of the aisle. I already ate, so I'm gonna head back and get some rest. It's been a long day. <laughs> no, of course. It really was nice seeing you. Are you sure? If you'd like to take Junebug instead, I... <laughs> the two talk at the same time, but Millie graciously sidesteps the both of them and swings open the door. She stops only to glance back at me and give me a wave. See you later, Olive! Good night. She disappears down the steps and into her waiting car, apologizing as the family waiting to enter the diner stand aside for her. Charlie and Mike speak to each other in a hushed tone after moving to the side of the car, so my mom can seat another family coming in. I get back to my work, but not long after, mom approaches the window. Hey, honey. Can you start a to-go order? It's for three. <laughs> I know who this order's for. Sure thing. Charlie and Mike sit at the bar stools. Even from here, I hear Mike leaving a voicemail for Millie, asking her to call him back whenever she'd like to chat. Charlie picks at her manicured nails, Flakes of paint coming off as she stares outside the window. No, Charlie, Charlie, you're ruining your nails. No. <laughs> Regret is written plainly across her face. Uh, 
I put extra fries into the order of loaded fries, half out of guilt for lying earlier, and half hoping it'll ease some of the tensions from tonight. Oh, oh, the... I'm learning so much about the dynamics going on here and I'm in pain. Oh, Millie. I turn the plate in my hands, examining the overall construction of the meal. It's been a long time since I've had a moment to really try something new. With the holidays rolling in, I thought adding a new special to the menu would be a good chance to do so. I'm pretty proud of how it came out. It's a French toast topped with a festive spiced fruit jam and a side of bacon, and easy enough to make a big batch overnight. I jot down a few more notes into the memo pad and take a bite. Ugh, too spiced. Blech. My phone buzzes on the counter nearby. I wipe my hands clean and put the plate aside. Olive! My caring and wonderful and amazing partner who invited me out to an event today? Question mark, heart, blushy face. Yes, they sure did do that, because they're definitely dating, and that definitely happened. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, uh. Lol, what's up? <laughs> Any chance you could come by and give me an alibi? My dad wants me to come help choose a wedding cake. <laughs> For us? <laughs> Live. Just kidding, where are you? Tanyans. Okay, give me 30 minutes. See you. It's been a while since I've seen Tanya, but I'm still hoping for a quick hello and goodbye without any fanfare. I clean up the kitchen quickly and shrug on my coat, checking the weather outside. It's pretty cold, but waiting for the trolley would probably take longer than just biking. Oh. oh, you're starting your unpacking. Oh my goodness. Good luck with the unpacking. I can't wait to see what you've bought at off, guy. Also, Lynn, hello. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. I love this game, but I'm making so many noises this stream. I'm. My reaction to this stream is just me going. <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. I, I, oh. Huh. Looks like circumstance will make the decision for me this time. I head out, grab my bike, and make my way over to Tanya's. Congratulations! Yeah? Congratulations? When I got frustrated at them not getting together right away after their kiss, you were like, oh, you don't even know the half of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm... It was just the beginning. I love that I was just like, oh, please realize it already. And not only have they not realized it, they're literally fake dating, which is going to make it take longer for them to realize it because of the nature of fake dating itself muddying all of the waters I'm oh goodness me goodness me I love it though I would not want it any other way well actually I would I, I would like them all to just be happy <laughs> that would be that would be preferable <laughs> but it's okay it's all right oh Susan mate you're sad you never got to give me one of my ribbons somehow oh yeah that's that's the one problem of me not going in person that's okay Figure out a way somehow, someday. I'm hoping one day that I might be able to get a P.O. box set up to, like, send me things if anyone ever wants to, like, send me a letter or little things in the post. But I haven't fully looked into that yet. I'd, I don't know if, like, the main thing is, like, would anyone even send me things? Would it just be a waste? But I have had a couple people who've wanted to mail me stuff, so maybe something to think about in the future. <laughs> And then I'll surprise send back a, a worm on a string if anyone leaves their address. 
Anyway, why are we being congratulated? So much for a quick hello and goodbye. Immediately after knocking on the door, Tanya dragged me inside, demanding gossip about our situation. You know, I always suspected it. <laughs> My gut never lies. Tanya. <laughs> I mean, she is right. But also not. But she she is right. She she knew. But these two don't know yet. Everyone's gonna know before these two. <laughs> Even if I think you could do better, Mills. Excuse me? Hello? You're drunk. Oh, okay. Tipsy. Barely buzzed. Doesn't mean I'm blind. She's drunk. <laughs> My eyes wander over the table in the corner of the room. At least two empty beer cans are knocked over, and there's an open pack of cider. Tanya? What time is it? What time? It's, a, it's only like midday, surely. It's, it's not... It could even still be morning. This, this is not the best time to be drinking, Tanya. <laughs> Tanya, go home. Wait, th this is her home. This is literally her home. Oh, goodness me. She's not wrong. I got very lucky. Oh, wait. <laughs> Olive. Part of me feels bad for how thick I'm laying it on, but hey, it helps sell the story. I don't... I'm sorry, Olive. I think you're being genuine here. I'm pretty sure they're being genuine. But, but they're telling themselves they're not. There's also the fact that it comes surprisingly naturally. Exactly, exactly. See? <laughs> they passed the test. Second one of the year and way more important than that other one. Yeah. You mean my finals? More important than getting through college? <laughs> yep. Mm. Hard to argue with that. Are you good to drive, Millie? Of course she is. Love has made her such a square, she won't even split a wine with me. Here I am celebrating her first date ever, all alone. I am... Um, I, I feel like the fact that Millie hasn't had a drink is the part that like makes me happiest here. Like this... Maybe, maybe she doesn't feel like she has to drink because things are looking up and she enjoys spending time with Olive. Maybe. Maybe. I feel like, like, just that little line does say a lot, though. Like, if she was still, like, super stressed out, she would have not even questioned that. She would, she would have had a glass of wine. But the fact that she hasn't means that the stress isn't that high. So that's positive. <laughs> right? Right? So there was wine, too. First date? We've had several already. <laughs> Olive! <laughs> Olive, oh my goodness. Olive? No, we haven't... I mean, we have? I... <laughs> no need to be embarrassed. Like I said, uh... I knew it from the start. I won't hold a grudge that you were trying to keep your new hotness a secret. <laughs> your new hotness. <laughs> I don't know why when I see the word hotness, my, my brain like auto fills it in as highness. So so now my brain is just going like your royal hotness. Uh, if I may approach, <laughs> approach the court. I'm... Oh. Please never say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. All those times in the writing club, uh, staying behind just to steal a kiss from each other. God, what a couple of romantics. Yeah. Yeah, you should hear all about how Olive confessed. It's so romantic. Tanya, please. I close my eyes and try to will myself not to react to any of Tanya's teasing. Millie herself shifts, uh, slightly shifts in her seat. Sorry in advance, Millie. Oh, are they gonna... Well, we should head out. 
Don't want to miss a reservation. <laughs> Suddenly, Tanya narrows her eyes, gesturing towards me with the bottle of cider. <sighs> reservation? I thought it was all romantic and spontaneous. <laughs> Millie stutters to try and get an explanation in, but I wave my hand. I wanted to take her somewhere nice, so I called around <laughs> earlier. I didn't tell her until I had a place lined up. Olive is going all out on this. Olive is fully invested in this role now, and I am so here for it. Yeah, they're so immersed in their role. Is this what we call method acting? Yeah, just put yourself in the shoes of someone who really likes Millie and wants to take her on a date. Hold on a second. <laughs> you know what? I kind of like this. I'm actually, I'm really here for this dynamic because I feel like the fact that they're both going, well, it's just fake, so we're just pretending. I think it's going to give them the confidence to do things that they wouldn't otherwise because they're such, like, disasters. Because they are fumble master disasters. They wouldn't, like, try this stuff because of that. But if it's like, it's not real, they're just pretending. It's not real dating. They, they, they can go all out and not worry about being embarrassed because it's all fake. It's like... <laughs> it's actually I, I really like this <laughs> I thought I was going to get annoyed with the fake dating but I think I'm going to like it because they're going to do the things that they probably wouldn't end up doing if they were date dating because they would feel too self-conscious and pathetic affectionate <laughs> yeah Olive can put on the sauce because they have nothing to lose oh exactly <laughs> oh it's great I love this I love this. I'm not usually a fan of fake dating stuff. I feel like I usually just get frustrated and go, please just realize your feelings already. But I think this is actually going to work out so nicely. I'm, 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 I'm here for this now. I, the, the <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> I turn to Millie, taking her hand and helping her up. Surprise. <laughs> Oh, Olive with the Riz. This is so funny. She takes a second to react, but when she does, her face relaxes and she nods. She stands next to me and we shrug our coats back on, successfully about to es... Uh. Hello? I'm gonna have to step away for a bit, be back soon though. Oh, okay, no problem. Hope things are okay. Hey, I'm here. Why is Haley here? Hello? Haley? Haley calls out as she opens the unlocked door and peeks her head in. At least she knocked. Haley, What are you doing here? I'm here to pick you up. Tanya texted me. Huh? She looks around Millie's shoulder to Tanya, who's laying with her feet up on the table. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I sent that earlier because I thought we'd be partying and you'd need a lift. Yeah? Yep. I brought some energy drinks so you could sober up for that wedding thing late. The, uh, mm -mm. Oh my gosh, yeah, okay, thank you, Haley. Great to see you, actually. I'm fine, so let's go outside. Bye, Tanya. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, she's... I feel really bad for calling her pathetic so much. It feels really mean. Please know that every time I call Millie pathetic, I'm not saying it in like a mean way. I'm saying it in the way when you like see a stray animal on the street and you want to just pick them up and take them home. It's it's that. <laughs> it's that kind of feeling. Also, holy shrimp. Hello. Welcome. 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 A wet cat. Exactly. Yes. Wet cat in the rain. Just imagine her like shaking 
looking a little bit draggled. I just want to like pick her up and fluff her up with a towel. <laughs> That's exactly it. Millie flies out the door, towing me by the hand and giving an uncharacteristically chipper wave before closing it behind her. Tanya yells out a goodbye as we go. It's quiet in the hallway. Haley gives us a blank stare, the bag of cans she's carrying clinking together as she angles her body towards us. Pitiful! I, I guess kind of, that, that feels a little bit mean as well though. But she really does have that kind of just... Like you just want to rescue her, like that, like... The damsel in distress kind of situation. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I love this situation. It's like it's 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 a little painful, but I love it. I love it a lot. Hey, Olive. Hey, Haley. Hey, Haley. Hi. We really need to get going now, so. Yeah. Don't want to be late. She turns towards me. Her expression unchanged. Something about how she stares directly at me makes me break eye contact. Where are you headed? Uh... Just, uh... out. Yeah, we're just, uh, going to this, uh, this place. You won't have heard of it. It's, um... Don't worry about it. There's a taxi out front if you need a lift. We can swing by your place. Actually... I'm going out with Millie today. Uh since when she doesn't miss a beat it's harder than i expected to keep a conversation going like this especially with how sharp she is more so when she provides no feedback at all if she's convinced they just invited me out a bit ago it was a a, a surprise <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh oh my god that made me jump <laughs> A loud shrill honk comes from in from outside. Haley doesn't flinch so much as she just glances at her phone briefly. So you're not going out with Caprice and them? No. No, sorry. Like I said, Olive actually arranged a date for. <laughs> she dropped the date word. You should tell them then. Caprice is waiting for you. Oh. Wait, she's downstairs? Oh, no. What, really? She's going to be late. Yep. Anyway, if you don't need the ride, I'm gonna head home. See ya. She gives me one last long look, broken by the impatient taxi driver outside laying on their horn again. Haley doesn't wait for us to leave, walking away without another word. Only when we hear the car outside take off do we both relax. That felt... bad. Yeah, th yeah. Sorry. Are you having second thoughts? No, I just... I didn't think she'd wait for me. Oh, the, 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 it's so It's so sad. I just... I really want to know why Millie is so... staunchly against this. Like, I, I can theorize as much as I want. I want her to say... Why exactly she is so against all of this? Like, it's... Like, there's there's a level of being against this that is, like... I feel like there has to be a reason behind it. Like, she's not just going to be like this for no reason. Unless she is just like this for no reason, and that's why it feels so bad. Who knows? Who knows? Emotions. Brains. How do they work? Grace? Yeah, she was really excited to go out today. I told her I wasn't sure if I would have plans, and I figured once it got late enough, she'd just... head out. <laughs> Guess that's on me, though. She'd stop at nothing to try and make me participate. She's worried about you. She's worried. There isn't any hint of bitterness or anger in her voice. In fact, Millie is smiling as she taps away a message to Caprice. Well... If you want to cancel a reservation, I won't stop you. And make you come all the way out here for nothing? I appreciate the offer, but I'm not ready to just pretend it's all fine just yet. Just yet. 
but maybe eventually. There's still hope. There's still hope that things will work out and everything will be fine. Also, wait, I just realized I missed a chat message. Uh, you casually forgot you won a giant whale in the cosplay showcase raffle. What? That's amazing. That's so good. What a good prize to win. <laughs> Did you forget until you unpacked it and then you were just like, wait, I have this giant whale. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, where's our super romantic getaway? Oh wait, I didn't even read this line. I got so distracted by the whale. She sends off the message and pockets her phone, looking back up at me with bright eyes. So, where's our super romantic getaway? I have some grocery shopping to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds perfect. Oh, wait, that's, that's really sweet, actually. Just be like, yep, can't can't miss our reservation in the groceries in the in the vegetable aisle. Gotta be sure to keep stocked up on spinach. <laughs> <sighs> the page for next semester's classes is daunting to say the least. Considering the circumstances, I didn't have the heart to plan out my next batch of classes. After all, the last thing I wanted was to get my hopes up. All the same, just like every semester, the sheer breadth and variety of the classes makes it hard to focus on any one. Wait, business management? You took a business management course? Why does that seem surprising? That feels like so fitting for Olive. Like, they they love logical things, they love planning things out, they're, they're like very meticulously organized. Business management feels perfect. Were you a business major? How did I not know this? Oh my goodness, they're learning about each other on their date. Like, the relationship is growing as they learn more about each other. Fake, fake, fakely. Uh, <laughs> I meet her incredulous disgust with a snort of amusement. I wasn't not a business major. What did you think I was studying? <laughs> Little pouty face. <laughs> I don't know. Culinary arts, maybe? Botany? Anything but business. Does our college offer a botany major? Well... Does it, Millie? <laughs> all right, all right. Enjoy your capitalist <laughs> nightmare. I love these two so much. Uh... Believe me, after the hell that last semester put me through, I think I'll take it as a sign to switch things up. I was just trying to find a major with steady job opportunities. Yeah. Gotta stack the deck in my favor somehow with all the debt hanging over my head. We can't all be artists. What makes you think I don't have debt? Sorry. Touché. Everything about you says scholarship or maybe high school valedictorian. <laughs> that gets a laugh out of her. I'd honestly be surprised if she didn't have a full ride to university after this, but it's probably rude to ask. Yeah, that would be rude to ask. Please, please don't, Olive. <laughs> but uh, I love how, like, I love how comfortable they are with each other now. Like, maybe the fake dating thing is actually perfect. I think if they were, like, date dating, they'd be too awkward and uncomfortable with each other still. They'd be very unsure. But because it's just a fake dating thing, there's none of, like, the, the pressure of the dating on top. So they're actually getting to know each other better through this. Wow, I can't believe I'm enjoying fake dating so much. I, <laughs> I love this. Yeah, learning things about people while hanging out with them, that is weird. I know, right? Communication, talking. Ah, oh, Luca Finn, hello! Doing your business major homework while hearing them. What a coincidence. Really a capitalist nightmare. <laughs> Oh, I I hope the the homework's going well. I hope you're able to do it quickly. But yeah, what an what an interesting thing to overhear while you're working as well. Oh, maybe everyone should fake date. Maybe it should be the new normal. Honestly, it's like now that I'm thinking about it, the thing that really like puts me off relationships a lot of the time is I feel really awkward around romance. I feel really awkward with like the romantic side of things and it feels like kind of different to me. I'm not a romantic. I'm like the opposite of a romantic person. 
I, I much prefer, like, comfortable normality. Like, the way I show affection is, like, throw a cat a monster in my direction. That's... <laughs> That's what I like, but but like if I was fake dating someone, like just pretending, but having a good time and like going on like friend dates and stuff. That that's <laughs> that's ideal to me actually. Hold on, I'm realizing things about myself. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it is, but you think there's not gonna be an end to it? Oh no. I hope there is, but ah. Uh... You feel me? Oh, that's why you identify as ace, but you're still figuring things out. Oh, that, that makes sense. I think it's nice, like, having labels that can, like, help you figure things out. Because the thing about labels is, like, they're not, like, stuck on you forever. Labels can change. If you, if you realize things about yourself afterwards, then you can, like, be like, well, maybe this label doesn't fit me. I will take it off and apply another one. Or maybe you just don't want a label at all, which is also fine. But it can be really nice for like figuring things out. It's very nice. But also for me as well, I, I, I think labels helped me discover what didn't apply to me. Like, uh, <laughs> like it helped in a way of like finding labels and being like, well, this doesn't really apply to me. So I know what I'm not in that kind of way. But yes, but yes, happy Pride Month! It is Pride Month, it is June. Which is the perfect time. I was gonna say the perfect time for me to be gay, as though I need like a time to specify for it. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate and the posture check. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. But uh, I am also, though, I'm also firmly of the opinion that love doesn't have to be romantic. And love doesn't have to always be in, like, a relationship sense. Like, I, I feel so strongly about, like, family love and friend love. Like, the kind of love I have for my friends is, like, I would never want to date them. We would not be compatible dating. I'd have no interest in dating. But that doesn't, like, diminish how much I love them. Like, <laughs> I love my friends so much. <laughs> like, I'm... I've got, like, friends that I've known for, like, half of my life now that are basically, like, family to me, and, like, I I love them so much. I, <laughs> I love them so much. But it's always a little bit awkward sometimes, because I'll talk about how much I love them, and they're like, oh, are you dating? And it's, it's, it's not always in a dating sense. Like, if I said I like Xander, people wouldn't ask if we're dating, because he's my brother, and it's really really weird but with friends it's somehow like the expected thing i want like family and friend love to be like more normalized i want it to be okay to just say i love you without it being weird that's what i like i just have a lot of love to share <laughs> but yes let me have a big stretch as well and sit up straight and i, I love that i'm saying sit up straight as i'm talking about the opposite of straightness, but it's fine. <laughs> but thank you. And oh, you got a pronoun this Pride Month. Excellent. Excellent. I love to see it. Alright, back to this. <laughs> Caprice actually got valedictorian. Oh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Really, really? I love Olive just having this giggling gremlin perception of Caprice. Like, valedictorian? Really? <laughs> but I still got salutatorian. We were neck and neck her entire high school oh. career, but the amount of extra credit she got through club activities pushed her over first place in the end. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I spent all my extra time studying just to keep up with her. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ica Caprice is canonically the smartest character in the story. I think especially like with the fact that she does so much extra as well, like it, it obviously comes naturally to her. Like the fact Millie's stay saying here that she literally spent her spare time studying to keep up. Wow, Caprice is smart. Capice? <laughs> Capiche? Is she, is she joining the mob now? Hold on. <laughs> what happened? Where's this going? 
<laughs> Thank you for the head pad. Capis. Capis. With a flourish, Millie stretches and takes another sip of her coffee, finishing it off. The smell of hazelnut has overtaken our whole booth with the amount of flavored creamer she used. She turns the computer back towards her and gives it one more scroll through, counting the amount of credits I've selected. It's mostly gen ed with one pastry class mixed in, thanks to Millie's recommendation of finding one class to get excited for. Choice of major aside, I think this is a much more sustainable selection than you had last semester. Oh, that's nice. It's no wonder everything came crashing down at the end. You have to account for time to rest in your schedule, too. <laughs> what? Time to rest? What's that? What is that? It's so funny because uh, in my schedule for this week, uh, you may have noticed I'm not streaming tomorrow. That's me attempting to put time to rest in my schedule. But it's also not going to be a full rest day because I'm going out to the theater in the evening. <laughs> So even on my rest day, I'm still planning on doing things. I'm not I'm not very good at this. I'm I need Millie to organize my schedule for me as well. <laughs> I decide to refrain from telling her the free time will likely be used to pick up extra shifts here. My mom's been pulling double shifts far too often for my comfort. Eh, I'll try. Thanks for looking it over with me. E oh. The bell chimes. Looks like break time's over. Standing up, I put on a courteous smile and go to greet. Howdy, it's me! Oh. Speaker the valedictorian? Uh, <laughs> uh, hi. Caprice bounds in with a characteristic wave like she's coming into a friend's house instead of a restaurant. She looks around with bright eyes, catching Millie's glance and giving her a big wave, too. Ooh, are you two on a date? <laughs> Excuse the interruption. Oh, Caprice. Millie was just helping me with my schedule for next semester. <laughs> to take all the same classes and pass love notes during the teacher's lectures? How shameless. Caprice is getting even more into this bit than they are. <laughs> Where are you getting these ideas? That does remind me. I never did properly congratulate you for passing your finals. So, congratulations! The <laughs> Wait, did she just... Oh, if she could make confetti fly around with just enthusiasm and volume, the entire trolley car would be full of it. <laughs> oh, I love Caprice. Oh, I love her. More confetti. All the confetti. Thank you. I'll do it. Oh, it made. Look how sad Millie looks, though. It's. Oh, I really want to. I really want to help Millie out with this wedding situation. I. I. Why is she so. Why is she so against it? I'm... Oh, I want to talk to her. We, ne we need a little therapy session with her. Thanks. It's really all thanks to Millie. Ah. She's a great teacher. Ah. I bet. Don't you grin like that. Oh, right. <laughs> she stands up straight like she's just remembered why she's here and immediately pulls out a sketchbook. On the side, next to a full page of doodles of various objects I recognize from around town, is a neat row of writing. Can I get some drinks to go? We would have gone to the vending machine down the way, but it's broken. Aha! Uh -huh. Sure thing. Thank you for the head pad. She follows me over to the order window and lists off everyone's individual drink, each with special instructions like extra ice and it's probably a joke but she asked if you could put a shot of bourbon in it too <laughs> after she pays i slide back the change and immediately get to work on the order the other drinks don't take too long but someone allison ordered a fancy latte while i prepare the cup with equal parts chocolate and caramel caprice sits at the bar stool swinging her legs we're doing pomodoro practice around town have you ever heard of it Ah! 
Yes, we actually do it in the writing club pretty often. Ha ha! What's it called again? Pomodoro, because that's the thing where it's like, do something, break something, like the, the specific like technique, question mark. Caprice giggles a bit and Millie rolls her eyes, hopefully in good humor. We usually call it the Pomodoro timer. Mm -hmm. It's when you set a solid amount of time aside and write as much as you can before the timer runs out. It's a good technique for just getting words written in a first draft, even if they need to be edited later. Yeah. It's like the situation of just like when you just have that time, you just do stuff in that time. The time is specifically for doing that thing, so you have to do that thing. I think it's a really good work method. <laughs> It works well with me because like if I don't schedule things in I just don't do them but like if if there's like a set time for something I'm always like okay this is the time I do the thing <laughs> or to get sketches down on a page exactly they share a smile together obviously sharing in the excitement of practicing their craft it's kind of refreshing to see I think back to when Haley visited my apartment long ago and the picture she showed me of Millie and Caprice at a party together. Hold on, I want to get to the end of this scene, but I just realized it's already five past six. Uh, give me a second. I will be right back one second. I'm going to go feed Tiffany quickly because my cat Tiffany gets fed at six o'clock and she's going to be mad. So I'm going to feed her and then I'll come back because I want to like finish this scene at least, even if it's only a couple more minutes. I... I gotta feed Tiffy first. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'll be right back. And oh, happy Women Wednesday. I know it's it's Women Wednesday some places. Like Australia, Japan side, it's already Women Wednesday. <laughs> but yes, I'll be right back in like... A minute? A minute. I'll try. Uh, don't time me. I don't know how long this will take. I'll be right back. I return. I'm back. The Tiffy has been fed. I was longer than a minute, but it's okay. <laughs> but I'm back, because I, I want to finish this scene at least. Like, it might be done in like five lines and I'll be like, well, I sh that was a waste of time, but, uh, <laughs> but I'd rather not rush. And Tiffany let out her little uh, meh, meh, outside my door as soon as I opened it. <laughs> but uh, I'm back. We can continue. Oh, thank you for doing the airline command as well. The, 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 the stream ambassador program. I'm part of that. If you buy things from the web store with my code, you can get a discount. There's twofold stuff there. You should get it. I'm going to get it when, when I have more money. <laughs> but yes, I'm back. And thank you for head patting me while I was away as well. Here we go. It's kind of refreshing to see. I think back to when Haley visited my apartment long ago, and the picture she showed me of Millie and Caprice at a party together. 
Seeing them like this makes sense, like it's always supposed to have been this way. That said, something clicks in the back of my head hearing all this talk about practicing and timers, especially given the weather outside. Wait, you're out with the art club? I thought the campus was closed for winter. It is. It is! She unlocks her phone with one smooth motion and swipes through countless open apps before landing on the calendar. She holds it up to the window, and while I can't really make out what anything says, especially while trying to foam the milk for this drink, it looks pretty filled up with multicolor events. Caprice has so much energy, how does she do it? I... <laughs> Uh, I... Hold on, I've frozen. Hello? Um, hmm. Give me a second, I appear to have frozen. What has just happened? What is happening? Hello? Am I still here? I think I'm still here. I'm... Hi? Hi? Oh, I'm back. Am I back? I'm back! I'm back! Ah. Ah. Hello! Hi! <laughs> that was weird. What happened? I have no idea what happened. Like, everything was still working. I don't... That, that was... That was bizarre. Uh, <laughs> right, anyway. Uh, hi. Hi. I just, um... I, I got so overwhelmed thinking of how busy Caprice is that I, I simply ceased to function. I was paralyzed by... The, the weight of her busy schedule. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but thank you. Hi, I'm, I can move again. That was interesting. Rain, sleet, snow, or hail, the arts club draws. Hmm. <laughs> the confidence to start a rhyme without knowing how to finish it is admirable. Oh, that's me. <laughs> That's like me with my haikus. The confidence to start a haiku without knowing what the last line's gonna be. <laughs> That's me. The art club draws without fail? Yes. The wordsmith. Oh, yes! Good one! Saying that, Caprice pockets her phone and thumbs the pages of her sketchbook, humming a little to herself. Really, it's more of a get-together between friends. Wallace and Eileen didn't even bring their sketchbooks. Haha. <laughs> But it's really nice to have a reason to see each other, so we keep it up even during breaks. Oh, that's so nice. Wait, that was the start of a haiku. Wait, was it? Didn't even know it. I'm... Guess I'm just that good. Instant haikus all the time. Check out my... Prowess? Uh... <laughs> I did it. I did it somehow. You, you've unlocked the cheat code for me to give a, a free haiku redeem. Just mention haikus and I'll just make one. <laughs> it's really funny because uh, I recently started playing uh, Borderlands 2 with some of my friends who've never played it before. Like, I haven't played that game in like three years now. It's been three years since, since I streamed Borderlands 2. But uh, I've been playing as Zero, and if anyone knows Borderlands, Zero speaks in haikus. So I've been... I've been doing that. I've been annoying. I've just been doing haikus all the time. <laughs> haiku skills! My ability to finish haikus is scary. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to intimidate. Hee <laughs> hee. Seems about right. The little I've interacted with the group as a whole, it seemed like team building and lifting each other up was the main focus of the club over any creative endeavor. I put a generous helping of whipped cream on top and immediately ruin it by putting on the lid, packing all four drinks into the carry container. Here you go. Thank you. She stands up to grab the drinks but hesitates at the last moment, her hands hovering the tray. Actually, have you thought about joining the art club? Caprice. Please. Huh? Really? She's really doing this? Really? Wow. <laughs> Is she doing this on purpose to rile Millie up? 
I, I, uh, I, at this point, it kind of feels like she's doing it to get a reaction out of Millie more than anything else. Like, I'm... I d from over Caprice's shoulder, I see Millie look up from the table. I can't make out what kind of expression she has. Caprice's face comes back into my view as she leans over to get my full attention. It's a bunch of fun. We go out on field trips, help each other study, and just have a good time. Caprice... Millie tents her fingers together carefully, like she's working out a good way to continue. Caprice doesn't wait for her to figure it out though, turning around with a bright smile. She knows what she's doing here. She knows what she's doing here. But why is she doing this? Oh, there's more than enough room for you too, Millie. I wouldn't dream of separating you two lovebirds. Uh... We're fine, Caprice. Neither of us needs your pity. Huh? What? All have passed their classes, so it's not like they need the tutoring anymore, right? Even then, they can just study with everyone in the art club instead. That's not the point, Caprice. What if Millie turned and said, Hey, well, you don't need that art club. There's, like, there's already an art club. You can just join our writing club instead. You would say no, right? What if they like the writing club? Oh, come on, Millie. You don't even like the writing club. No. <laughs> I think I get Caprice's angle here. I think she's like, writing club is making Millie miserable. Remove writing club. Millie not be miserable. I, I, I can see the reasoning behind it, but also no, that is not the problem here. Stop trying to read my mind and fix things that aren't a problem. Uh, uh. I'm not. I'm just trying to be nice. Did you forget what that looks like? Oh no, they're fighting again. If wedging yourself oh. in your club in the middle of everything is being nice, I'd really like to know what you think being insulting is. Why are you always picking oh. a fight with me? It's like everything I say just sets you off. Why don't you try talking less? Okay, hey, uh, maybe we should take a minute. Oh boy. Whatever, I'm out of here. Uh. I think I understand Caprice's angle. I also understand Millie's angle. I'm... Oh... Caprice takes the tray, her care at making sure not to spill, carefully balanced by her storming off. With a final huff, she looks up at me. Just think about it, Olive. Sometimes Millie doesn't know a bad situation if it bit her and the... Are you leaving or not? Caprice closes her eyes tightly, shaking her head and refusing to respond to her. With a careful glance towards Millie, I try to keep a level, non-argumentative tone. Thanks for the offer, Caprice. I think I'll stick with Millie in the writing club, though. Oh, I love how Olive didn't even, like, think about that. They they already decided, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think they were ever considering not staying in the writing club. Really? Really? <laughs> Oh. I shoot Millie a glance and try to communicate a you really shouldn't be the one asking that expression. Somehow she pulls her shoulders back in a more confident look, something I didn't realize she had lost throughout this argument until now. That's that then. Oh, that means she was genuinely worried about Olive leaving to join the art club. Oh. All right, offer still open anyway. She turns and looks at Millie. Any anger she had before is replaced with another attempt at friendliness, her voice soft. For both of you. <laughs> with that, she leaves Millie and I behind. The air in the bell house feels several degrees colder with her gone, all the heightened emotions drained now. Millie avoids my eye contact for a bit, her brows knit together and her hands fidgeting nonstop. Ten minutes pass before she stands and brings her empty mug to the counter. Can I get a refill? Of course you can. Sure. Ha. Ah, another smile. Were you only saying that thing about the writing club because you're my pretend partner? Pretend, yeah. Fake dating, pretend. 
Oh, welcome back. You you only caught me because I, I wanted to keep going until I'm done with the scene. I, I usually end my stream like, oh goodness, like 20 minutes ago from now. <laughs> but welcome back. Glad you could catch the end of my stream. Nah. Nah, they really want to. Like, th If I was, though, I'd be pretend partner of the year. Oh, yeah. Another laugh. Bit by bit, the atmosphere in the diner changes to one of relaxed, sep relaxed separation. As I get to work for the oncoming dinner rush, Millie reads out a few more class options in case I want to swap one out. Afternoon becomes dusk, customers begin pouring in, and Millie heads home. When I look at my computer again, I can see a poorly typed out cat with a thumbs up emote next to it. Oh! Good luck next semester. Remember, hang in there. Yee. My post-it. I've still got the post-it. Yay. We did it. And this will be the stopping point. Next will be a few days later. Da, 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 da. Oh, the tree. It's the tree. It's the tree. Right, with that, we will give it a save. Do the right thing. Ooh. And that feels like a good spot to leave it at. I'm, I'm glad I finished through that scene. That would have, it would have felt bad to like stop in the middle of that scene and then come back to it as the start of the next one. But oh my goodness, so many things this time, so many revelations. I did not see the whole wedding thing coming. I did not expect that. And now it's like, it makes a lot of sense why the dynamic would be so different now. That That is the kind of thing that does change the dynamic a bit. But uh, with that, I shall uh, bloop. Let's head on over to here and find a raid target. Hold on, I'm gonna put the, put the blanket away. There we go. I'll keep the post-it on though. But yes, thank you so much everyone for joining me today. I love Two Fold Tuesday. It's so good. It's so good. It's, it's becoming like my, my favorite thing to look forward to. <laughs> like whenever I'm thinking of streaming, like I'm playing some amazing games at the moment. I'm just looking forward to every stream I do, which is so nice. But yes, thank you so much for joining me today on Twofold Tuesday. I can't wait to see how next week goes. There's, I, I don't know how it's gonna go. I have no idea how it's gonna go. I'm terrified and also looking forward to it. And I've also been convinced of the <laughs> the positives of the fake dating trope. I've, I've been won over, I think. I think I've been won over by it. I, I never thought it would be a thing I would enjoy, but I, I think I like the fake dating dynamic. <laughs> At least for these two. At least for these two. But uh, Millie Act 2 is one of your favorite chunks of the game. You're glad we got pretty deep into it. Oh, I'm so glad as well. It feels like I'm, I'm really like getting to know everyone's like motives and reasonings behind things a lot more now. And it's making it so, like it makes so much more sense, but it also makes it so hard to, to figure out how everyone's gonna work their way through this. But anyway, I've I've gone on a lot longer than I intended to today. But uh, it's just the power of twofold, I guess. Like, I I just I just had to keep going. I, like, if if I wasn't really hungry, I would probably still keep going again. Like, I I don't just want to end yet. I want to keep playing it. But it's okay. We only have to wait until next Tuesday. <laughs> but right, let's find a raid target. Let's see who's on to send a raid over to. Yeah, yeah, oh, it was definitely worth it. Every everything about this game is worth it. I love it so much. Who shall I raid? Who shall I send the raid to? There's a few people around. I could raid Sylphie again. I could raid... Oh, actually, let's raid Val. Let's raid Val. What? Oh, she's playing Grand Blue at the moment. The, uh, the Grand Blue... Uh, the 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 game that's not the fighting one. <laughs> but yeah, visual novels really are like that. Never want to stop reading. I know. I just 
Especially when it's like such a good story and such good characters that you really like, you get so gripped on the story, you just want to keep going with it and find out more. But uh, I don't know, I like streaming it too because it, it makes the experience last a bit longer. Like I can't just binge through it and then be run out of content. I'm, I'm forcing myself to have it in chapters. It's nice though, it's fun. And like this is just Millie's route as well. We've still got Caprice's path to do. And also befriending Tanya and uh, figuring out what Heather's deal is. Because at the moment we're like, we're focused more on Darren, I think. It makes me wonder if scenes would be different depending on who I chose there. Like if when Heather storms out of the room, like maybe I could follow Heather instead of staying in the room with Darren. I don't know. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that works. But yes, I think I'm going to send the raid over to the lovely Vel. She's been streaming for like five hours now, so I don't know how much longer she's going to be streaming for, but she was at the Studio Elan panel at Ofkai. <laughs> so another another Elan fan as well. So I'm going to send you over to Vel, and here is the raid message. If you're subbed, we have comfy. If you're not subbed, we have hearts. We will send the love over in Belle's direction and I will go and get some dinner because I'm getting quite hungry. <laughs> but yes, before I go again as well, just in case anyone is interested, if you check out the Elan store online, if you use code Liri, you will get 10% off your order. And there's some really nice stuff there. There's some really good stuff. So uh, with that, I shall send the raid over to Belle. I'll go get some dinner. And then that is it from me for now until Friday. I'll be back on Friday for hopefully some more divinity, depending on how Xander's feeling. If Xander's still having trouble with his teeth, with his mouth, it will be house flipper again, because I like the flippy Friday. But uh, fingers crossed he'll be feeling okay for divinity. We'll see how it goes closer to the time. But either way, that's it from me until Friday now. I'm looking after myself. I'm gonna rest after off Kai for a bit. <laughs> But it's been so fun. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.